dealing with monsters kids part two so we're going to continue on all right um watch this um let's open up with the book of hmm. give me that in uh, give me that in, uh, in, in give me that in psalm 78 we're going to be reading psalm 78 we're going to read verse psalm 78 and verse 7 we're going to read that Okay, Psalm 78, verse 7. Is that? Psalm chapter 78, verse 7. Mm -hmm. That they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God. Come on. But keep his commandments. But keep his commandments. That they, that they is the children. That the children might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. Come on. And might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation. Three. A generation that said not their hearts are right and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. So now the Lord is commanding us and saying, listen, make sure that the children are taught God's commandments that they not what? They may not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation. A generation that said not their hearts are right, whose spirit was not steadfast with God. That's why we went into captivity because of that thing. So the Lord is commanding us to teach our children that the children do not follow after our forefathers that was rebellious when it came to God's command. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Ezekiel now. In Ezekiel chapter 2. Ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 3. Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 3. Mm -hmm. And he said unto me, son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel to a rebellious nation that hath rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me, even unto this very day. Read that again, verse 3. Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 3. Mm -hmm. And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that hath rebelled against me. Come on. They and their fathers have transgressed against me. Even unto this very day. Even unto this very day. 2021. Even unto this very day. He says, I'm going to send you to the house of Israel. But let me tell you about the house of Israel. He says, it's a rebellious nation that rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me. Even unto this very day. Come on. Verse 4. Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 4. For they are impudent children and stiff-hearted. I do send thee unto them, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God. So now, you see what the Lord is, so is saying. Verse 3 is saying, This is a rebellious nation that rebelled against him. It says, For they are impudent children and stiff hearted, meaning what? Hard headed, like a donkey. Okay? I do send thee unto them, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God. Come on. Verse 5. Watch this. And they, whether they will hear, or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house. Come on. Yet shall know that there has been a prophet among them. You see what he's saying right there? He says, go there, whether they're going to hear you or not, whether in season or out of season, teach them anyway. Why? Because those that will hear will be, the, they will be part of the elect. Those will be stiff-necked, they will be put to death. That's what he's saying right there. Read that again verse 5. The book of Ezekiel 2, 2 verse 5. And mm -hmm. they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall know that there has been a prophet among them. He says, yet, they're going to know that there has been a prophet among them. Watch this. Now give me the book of Sirach 26 verse 10. Because guess what? Because the, the, because the fathers and mothers were rebellious against the Lord, Guess what? The children also will follow suit. Watch this. You know what? Before you get me there, go back to um, we read this last night. Give me that. To go back to uh, Deuteronomy 31. Deuteronomy chapter 31. Deuteronomy 31. Read verse 12 again. I really love this verse. Okay? Read verse 12 again. You know what? Start at verse 11. Mm. Uh -huh. Start at verse 11. You know what? Mm. Hold, wait, wait, wait. Start at verse 9. Start at verse 9. Okay. Yes, sir. 
the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 31, verse 9. Come on. And Moses wrote this law and delivered it unto the priests, the sons of Levi, which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord and unto all the elders of Israel. You see that thing? He delivered, he wrote the law and delivered it to the priests, the sons of Levi, which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord unto all the elders of Israel. You understand? Watch this. Jump down to verse, hmm, jump down to verse 11. Watch this. Read verse 11 again. I just want to test something. Okay, come on. Verse 11 again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 31, verse 11. Come on. When all Israel is come to appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose, thou shalt read this law before all Israel in their hearing. So now, you see, remember this night, when Moses wrote the law, you understand, the Lord delivered the words to Moses, Moses wrote them down. He delivered to the priest, okay? And the priest will be there, will be, will be able to help Israel to deal with their issue. You understand? Because we always had, we, we never had a, a we, had, we always had a government, but that government was not a democracy. It was never a democracy. It was a theocracy. It was run by priests, governed by the law that was given to us by the Most High God. Okay? Read verse 11 again. When all Israel is come to appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose, read. thou shalt read this law before all Israel in their hearing. He says, thou shalt read this law before all Israel in their hearing, meaning they must hear this word, to testify against them when they go off. Okay, come on. Gather the people together, men and women and children, and thy stranger that is within thy gates, that they may hear and that they may learn, and fear the Lord your God, and observe to do all the words of this law. Read. And that they are children which have not known anything, may hear and learn to fear the Lord your God, as long as ye live in the land whither ye go over Jordan to possess it. So that land, it took about the land of Israel. The land that the Lord has promised to our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That is the land he's talking about this, that it, it's talking about here. And it, it was true back then, so it is today. It's true today. Because our job is to get ourselves right in the land of our captivity with the grace that the, with the, grace that the Lord has granted unto us. So that we can get ready to go back to the land, to the wilderness, then to the land. It's the same thing. You understand? Read verse 13 one more again. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 31, verse 13. Come on. And that they are children which have not known anything, mm -hmm. may hear and learn to fear the Lord your God, as long as you live in the land whither you go over Jordan to possess it. So the whole point is to make sure that the children also that don't know anything may be, may be taught of their parents. The fathers and mothers job is to sit down with their children and teach them God's commandments, conduct, respect, order, how to be, how to speak. You understand all of the, how to interact with others. That is what the job of, that's what Moses was explaining here. This is a family business. That's why it says men and women and children, the whole nation of Islam, because it's made up of what? Men and women and the children, married men and married women and the children, family. That's how a nation gets built. A strong nation is going to be built upon strong men and strong women, strong marriages. That's how a strong nation is going to get built. That's what Moses is teaching us here. But our forefathers was rebellious, okay? That was rebellious to God's commandment. Guess what happened to the children? They did the same thing. Give me the book of the give me the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 10. Read that. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 16, verse 10. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt show these people all these words, right. and they shall say unto thee, Wherefore hath the Lord pronounced all this great evil against us? Or what is our iniquity? Or what is our sin that we have committed against the Lord our God? So now, that's what's going on today. He says it shall come to pass, meaning future tense. What's going to happen is that we're going to show the people all the words that are written in this book. You understand? And they shall say unto thee. And the people are going to say unto us, why did the Lord do this to us? Why did we go into slavery? If the Lord loves us, if we are God's chosen people, why then are all these evils pronounced against us? Watch this. 
Let's go to the book of Judges, okay? Let's go to the book of Judges. Judges chapter, Judges chapter eight. Mm, let me see if that's what I want. No, no, give me Judges six. Judges chapter six and the 12. Judges chapter six, verse 12. The book of Judges chapter six, verse 12. Mm -hmm. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, the Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Come on. And Gideon said unto him, Oh, my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? You see that thing? So he says, if the Lord be with us, because remember what the angel said. He says, the Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Now Gideon, which his name was changed to Jerubabel, now he's asking, so listen, if the Lord is with us, why then is all this befallen? Why are we in trouble if the Lord is with us as we say? That is the question here. It says, when we bring out the word of God on the street corners, when we teach our people, that is the question they're going to ask. So if you are saying we are the Israelites, we are God's chosen people, why then is all this evil against us? That's the same thing that Gideon is asking you. Come on. And where be all his miracles which our fathers told us of, saying, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us. The Lord has what? The Lord has forsaken us. You see what they are, you see what he's saying? He says, listen, we've heard of the great things that our father told, told us regarding what happened when we were delivered out of Egypt. But he says, but now the Lord has forsaken us. Come on. And delivered us unto the hands of the Midianites. He says, the Lord has forsaken us, and now he has delivered us into the hands of the Midianites, meaning what? Our enemies. But the Lord didn't forsake us. We forsook the Lord. That's what happened. With the Lord, the Most High didn't forsake us, but we did. We forsook him. Okay? Watch this. Give me the book of Jeremiah chapter 2. Okay? Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 30, 33. No, read verse 32. Jeremiah 2 verse 32. Watch this. The book of Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 32. Mm -hmm. Can a maid forget her ornaments or a bride her attire? Yet my people have forgotten me days without number. You see what he's saying? That's some heavy verse right there. He says, can a maid forget her ornaments? Meaning, can a woman forget to uh, fix herself up to fix herself up in front of the mirror? No, they don't forget. Sisters, do you forget that? No, sir. No. Sorry, sir. Excuse no, me. No, sir. Okay, wait a minute. Sisters, let me ask you a question again. Sisters, do you forget to stand in front of the mirror when you leave the house in the morning? No, sir. We don't. Okay, okay, no, sir, okay. We don't. okay all praise. Read verse 32 again. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 2, verse 32. Come on. Can a maid forget her ornaments mm -hmm. or a bride her attire? Yet my people have forgotten me days without number. So they're just like a woman cannot forget her makeup and to stand in front of the mirror to fix herself up, neither can a bride forget her wedding dress. Can a woman that's about to get married, when you understand, forget her wedding dress? That never happens. You understand? But it says, yet my people have forgotten me days without number. So meaning what? That it is so impossible for a woman, it's, a, it's impossible for a woman to forget to stand in front of the mirror. It's impossible for a woman that's about to get married to forget her wedding dress. But for some reason, for some ungodly reason, it's possible for Israel to forget the Lord. You see how evil the, the nation of Israel we are? Some evil stuff here. Okay? The Lord is telling you the things that are impossible. But Israel, with their rebellion, they make it possible. You see that thing? Hmm. Hmm. Some heavy stuff, yeah. Give me Judges. Go back to Judges chapter 6, verse 13 again. The book of Judges, chapter 6. Verse 13. Come on. And Gideon said unto him, Oh, my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles which our fathers told us of, mm -hmm. saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. You see that thing? The Lord has forsaken us. No, the most I did not forsake us. We forsook the Lord. We forgot the most high God days without number. 
You understand? Go back to Jeremiah now, 15, verse 10. One more again. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 16, verse 10. Come on. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt show these people all these words, and they shall say unto thee, Wherefore hath the Lord pronounced all this great evil against us? Or what is our iniquity? Or what is our sin that we have committed against the Lord our God? Mm -hmm. Come on. Then shalt thou say unto them, Mm -hmm. Because your fathers have forsaken me, right says there. the Lord. He says, because your what? Because your fathers have forsaken me. That's the key right there. The reason why the Lord has pronounced all this great evil against us is because our forefathers forsook the Lord. So what makes you what 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 do you think? What what do you think is gonna happen to the children? The children are gonna do the same thing and they're gonna do it worse than their fathers. That's why you see today, um, the, the children are behaving worse than their fathers. They are more rebellious than their fathers ever were in the wilderness. You understand? That's what Jeremiah is explaining here. The Lord is explaining this to Jeremiah because your fathers have forsaken me. That is what we're supposed to tell the people. That is what we're supposed to teach the people. That the reason why you are in slavery is because you forsook the Lord. You, you brought this upon yourself. That is what the Lord says we must teach the people. Okay? Read verse 11 again. Book of Jeremiah, chapter 16, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Then shalt thou say unto them, because your fathers have forsaken me, saith the Lord, and have walked after other gods, and have served them, and have worshipped them, and have forsaken me, and have not kept my law. You see that thing? Because we, the minute we reject God's commandments, we are worshipping other gods. That's from here it starts. When we reject God's commandments, automatically, we worship other gods. We worship idols, the idols of the other nations. It's automatic. The minute you go outside of God's commandments, automatically you're worshiping another God. Until you what? Until you repent, get yourself together, then you are in, you are what? Now you're worshiping the most high God. And this is something that we have to learn. This is something that we have to repeatedly be hit in. We need to hit the laws of God into our mind. We, it needs to be imprinted in our brain so that we understand that the minute you go outside of God's commandments, automatically you're worshipping another God. But the Lord is still giving you a chance to recover yourself. Recover yourself. You understand? Read that again. Verse 11. Book of Jeremiah, chapter 16, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Then shalt thou say unto them, because your fathers have forsaken me, says the Lord, and have walked after other gods, and have served them, and have worshipped them, and have forsaken me and have not kept my law. You see that thing? We have worshipped, we have, we have walked after other gods. You understand? And have forsaken me and have not kept my law. That is what's going on today with our people. Our people, they are not worshipping the one true God. They are worshipped, they have walked after the gods of the other nations. They are idols and have served them and have worshipped them and have forsaken me and have not kept my law. Next verse. Watch this. And he have done worse than your fathers. You see that thing? Is that the children now have done worse than their forefathers ever done. Because when you read the rebellion of our forefathers in the wilderness with Moses, listen, if you thought that was rebellion, you have to fast forward to, to fast forward it to today. You have to fast forward that to today. Because when we left Egypt during the Exodus, it was around 1225 BC. 12,000 years. You understand? 1225 BC. Around 1225 BC. So now we are in what? We are in 20. 2021. 2000. AD. You understand? How many thousands of years has it been? Mm -hmm. So you can imagine that thing. The level of rebellion that is built up through generations that came after those that came before them is worse. That's why it says you have done worse than your father. Okay, read that part again. Verse 12. Book of Jeremiah, chapter 16, verse 12. Mm -hmm. And he have done worse than your fathers. For behold, you walk everyone after the imagination of his evil heart, that they may not hearken unto me. That they may not hearken unto me. Because if we are not hearkening unto the voice of the Lord our God, we are listening to something else or someone else. Okay, come on. Therefore will I cast you out of this land into a land that ye know not. Pray. 
neither ye nor your fathers, and there shall ye serve other gods day and night, where I will not show you favor. That's what's going on now. Because we were kicked out of the land. The most high God, he kicked us out. He used the Romans to do it. You understand? And we ended up what? We ended up in the land of our slavery, worshipping the gods of these other nations that, that have us enslaved. You understand? It says, the Lord says, I'm not going to show you favor. So the things that you saw that have been happening on the earth to us as a people is the Lord not showing us favor. Why? Because we forsook the Lord. So what Gideon was asking when he says, why has the Lord forsaken us? He wasn't in the right spirit at that point. Why did the Lord forsaken us? Why? Because we forsook the Lord. The Most High did never forsake us. He never forsaken us. Never ever. But we the one that did it. When we did that, the Lord said, you know what? You're on your own. You understand? That's what happened to us. That's what's still going on today with us. But the Lord is still having mercy upon us once again. He's waking us up in these last days to get ourselves right, to get ourselves together. Okay? Watch this. Give me the book of Sarah 26, verse 10. Because remember, it says, you've done worse than your father. Who's, the, who's those that have done worse than our father? The children. You understand? Which is what today's topic is about. Okay? Sarah 26, verse 10. Read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 26, verse 10. Mm -hmm. If thy daughter be shameless, keep her in straightly, lest she abuse herself through overmuch liberty. So right now, we're going to deal with the daughters now. Okay, we're going to deal with it. We were dealing with the son last night. We're going to deal with the daughters. Okay, but before we get there, give me, mm, go back, give me Sirach 7. Sirach chapter 7, verse 24. Start at verse 23, actually. Sirach 7, 23. Read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 7, verse 23. Mm -hmm. Hast thou children? Instruct them and bow down their neck from their youth. You see that thing? Do you have, if you have got children, it says instruct them and bow down their neck from their youth. Because some of you might be saying, you know what, I don't have kids. Sisters might be saying, I don't have children. I don't have, I don't have children. Okay, let me show you something. So that you brothers and sisters can get your mind right. Watch this. Give me the book of uh, First Timothy chapter 5 and 1. Okay. First Timothy 5. Okay. First Timothy chapter 5 and verse 1. Watch this. First book of Timothy chapter 5 verse 1. Come on. Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, and the younger man as brethren. You see that thing? It says, rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father. So the leadership, those are fathers to you, okay? And the younger, the younger man as brethren. Meaning what? You've got younger brothers, you understand? You're, you've got younger brothers, young brothers in the congregation. Okay, that's what he's talking about right here. When he says, and the younger men as brethren. But watch the next verse. Verse 2 now. Watch this. The elder woman as mothers. The what? The elder women as mothers. So you sisters in this truth, when there's young girls in the truth, you are like mothers to them. I hope you understand that. Okay? You are like mothers to them. Read that part again, verse 2. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 2. Mm -hmm. The elder women as mothers, the younger as sisters with all purity. You see that thing? And they, it says the younger as sisters with all purity. So you've got a nephew, you've got an, I mean, you've got a niece and all of that. You, you are a sister, you've got a niece, you are a sister, you've got a, you've got a, somebody that is you know, in your family line, but they are not directly your mother's child. Guess what? You, they are sisters. You the older sister. You understand? You the older sister. That's what this is going into. So let's go back now. Go back to Sarah 7, verse 23. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 7, verse 23. Mm -hmm. Has thou children? Instruct them and bow down their neck from their youth. You see that thing? Do you have children? You must instruct them. How must you instruct them? According to God's commandments. You must teach them the way of the law. Like we read last night in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 down. Okay? It says, bow and bow down their necks from their youth, meaning when they're still young. Make sure that you catch them early and teach them. Build them up. You understand? So the younger brothers, the younger sisters that are coming in, guess what? You've got mothers in this truth. You've got fathers in this truth. You've got older brothers in this truth. You've got older sisters in this truth already. 
You understand? Next verse. Has thou daughters? Have a care for their body mm -hmm. and show not thyself cheerful toward them. You see that thing? Do you have daughters? Have a care for their body. Have a care of their body. Meaning what? You make sure that um, you sit on their behind. I like that word. You must sit on their behind. Especially these young girls, very, very sneaky. You understand? You better make sure that you have a leash on them. Okay? Read that, read that part again, verse 24. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 24. Come on. Has thou daughters, have a care of their body, mm -hmm. and show not thyself cheerful toward them. And show not yourself cheerful towards them. Meaning what? Don't play with them. When you see, don't wink at their follies. That's what he's saying when he says, show not yourself cheerful towards them. Meaning, don't wink at their follies. When they go off, don't reward them in their wickedness. You must correct them. You must make sure they have a tight leash. And I'm going to explain why the women must have a tight leash. I'll tell you. I'm going to explain to you in the sisters why these sisters must have a tight leash. Especially these young girls. You understand? Watch this. Hmm. Give me, go back to the right now, 26, verse 10. Go back to the right 26, verse 10. Don't make me forget my point. The scripture, the, the, you see when it says, um, show not yourself cheerful towards them. And I mentioned, listen, you must have a tight leash around their neck. Mm -hmm. I'm going to explain to you what that means, actually, what I mean by that. There are 26 verse 10. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 10. Uh -huh. If thy daughter be shameless, keep her in straightly, lest she abuse herself through overmuch liberty. You see what he's saying? If your daughter be shameless, if your daughter is shameless, hold this, Sirach, give me the 26, 25, real quick. Read the 25. Ecclesiastes. Chapter 26, verse 25. Mm -hmm. A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog. Come on. But she that is shamefaced will fear the Lord. You see that thing? It says, a shameless woman shall be counted as a dog. So if your daughter is shameless, she's counted as a dog. Because what does what, what, what a female dog do? What, what do they do? A female dog will parade her legs all over the community. Mm -hmm. And then when the female dog is pregnant, that's when it comes back home. So that's what the Lord is explaining here. A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog. That's because that's what a female dog does. You understand? Okay, go back to where was that? Sarah 26, verse 10. Ecclesiastes 26, verse 10. Mm -hmm. If thy daughter be shameless, keep her in straightly, lest she abuse herself through overmuch liberty. If your daughter is shameless, you understand? She has no shame, no moral, she has no moral compass, okay? It says, keep her in straightly. Put a leash around her neck. Make sure that she's got a tight leash. You understand? Let she abuse herself because if you don't keep her in straightly, she's going to abuse herself through over much liberty. Because uh, guess what? That liberty is idleness. Because idleness teaches much evil. So the reason why you're supposed to make sure that you are you must keep a short watch. You understand? You must make sure that she doesn't go off. Your job is to maintain a tight leash around her neck. You understand? That's why it says, uh, have a care of her body. That's how you do it. You understand? Come on. Verse 11. Watch over an impudent eye mm -hmm. and marvel not if she trespass against thee. He says, watch over an impudent eye. An impudent eye is a disrespectful eye because you must watch because these girls, when you correct them, they'll be rolling their eyes. Listen, they, you must give them the beat. They must stop doing that thing because that's disrespectful. They do that to their fathers, to their older brothers, to their uncles. Okay? Read that part again. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Watch over an impudent eye really? and marvel not if she trespass against thee. It says, don't marvel if she trespass against you because why? You allow her to be disrespectful. When she's going to disrespect you, guess what? Don't be, don't marvel. You understand? Ray. She will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler when he has found a fountain and drink of every water near her. By every hedge will she sit down and open her quiver against every arrow. So now what we are reading here, what we are reading here, jump back up to the tent. He's gonna, because what we're reading here is the shamelessness. 
That's why he's saying, if thy daughter be shameless, if your daughter be that female dog, that's what he's saying. Verse, verse 10 again, read verse 10 now, again. Verse 10, if thy daughter be shameless, keep her in straightly, lest she abuse herself through overmuch liberty. You see that thing? The shamelessness and the abuse is the 12. Is explained in verse 12. Read verse 12 now. She will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler when he has found a fountain. She will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler when he has found a fountain. Watch this. We coming back here. Give me the book of Proverbs, chapter 30. Okay, give me Proverbs real quick. Proverbs. Hmm. Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 20. The book of Proverbs, chapter 30, verse 20. Mm -hmm. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth and wipeth her mouth and saith, I have done no wickedness. Read that again, verse 20. The book of Proverbs, chapter 30, verse 20. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. Is a, such is the way of an adulterous woman. I need you brothers to pay attention to this. You sisters too. As a, such is a way of the adulterous woman. It's going to give you the way of an adulterous woman. How she behaves. You understand? Next verse. Next part of the verse. She, she eateth and wipeth her mouth. Stop right there. It says she eateth and wipeth her mouth. Watch this. Come on. And says, I have done no wickedness. You see, from even from the youth, do you see these young girls? They don't want to take responsibility for their wicked behavior. Guess what? The same behavior you see in these teenage girls is the same behavior in the sisters too. You know, the, the older sisters, they do the same thing. And what I mean by that is, you see when it says, she eats and wipes her mouth and says, I have done no wickedness. Guess what? One of the biggest things that women don't do is take responsibility and accountability for their actions. Women don't want to admit when they are wrong. Why? Because of their pride. You understand? So they will eat and wipe their mouth and say, I've done nothing wrong. I don't see nothing wrong that I did. That's the woman. That's the way of the adulterous woman. I need you brothers to pay attention to this. And especially you sisters. You understand? This spirit is heavy in Israel, by the way. This verse 20. Read verse 20 again. The book of Proverbs. Chapter 30, verse 20. Come on. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. Mm -hmm. She eateth and wipeth her mouth and says, I have done no wickedness. I have done no wickedness. You understand? They were, especially like you. Now let's go back. Let's dial it down to the teenage girls. The teenage girls will have sex. You understand? The only way you're going to find out, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to, the only way you're going to find out if they are, they're, they're, they're having sex is when they are pregnant and the, the situation could not allow them to have an abortion. Because once they realize that they are pregnant, they're going to go and abort the baby. And guess what? They're going to continue on the evening. And if you ask them, you ever had an abortion, sister? They're going to say, no, not me. Me, I love the Lord. You understand? But she's a walking, uh, what do they call it? She's a walking sepulcher. There's nothing in there. But that, that's, what, that's exactly what we are reading. Read the journey again. The book of Proverbs, chapter 30, verse 20. Come on. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. Mm -hmm. She eateth and wipeth her mouth and says, I have done no wickedness. I have done no, I don't see, I, listen, I'm, I'm squeaky clean. You better watch those type of sisters. Because sisters, they don't want to take responsibility. Right? And they like to declare. You tell them, listen, sister, this is your wrong. You know what? They will take a tangent. They will go somewhere else. Deflection. They are masters of deflection. So, brothers, you better pay attention to that spirit. The Lord is telling you that's the way of an adulterous woman. You understand? That's the way of an adulterous woman right there. Go back to the rack, 26 verse 12. Read that thing. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 26, verse 12. Come on. She will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler mm -hmm. when he has found a fountain. You see, in the, you see when, when, she, when, she, when this sister finds the fountain, Guess what? She will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler. You understand? Because when somebody, say you ever see, see cows when they are, they've been traveling for, for miles and they find the water, they, they drink, they'll be standing there for, 
for a couple of hours just drinking the water. Mm -hmm. He says, women are like that. You understand? Because she's, she's thirsty. The thirst here is talking about it's not regular thirst because there's children in here. There's not regular thirst. Talk about that other type of thirst. Okay, come on. And drink of every water near her. She's going to drink of every water near her. She doesn't matter what, what it looks like. She, it doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter to the sister. She will do it. These teenagers, they are, they, that's exactly what they do. Because guess what? What happens? Um, for the teenagers, they don't stay teenagers forever. They grow up. You understand? They become the sisters today that you see behaving so wretchedly. Because the teenagers, they were behaving just like the teenagers are behaving today. So now they've grown. They've advanced in their wickedness now. You understand? So she will drink of every water near her. It doesn't matter what it looks like. The sister will lay down with it. But when you examine the animal kingdom, right? A female rat, a female rat, a rat, a female rat will never sleep with a male rat if it finds out that it does not want, doesn't have a neck. Two, it suspects it can sniff because they can sniff. They can tell, hmm, this one is going to disease. The female rat will never sleep with the male rat. But the black woman, she don't care. You understand? She will do it. You understand? That means the rat has more understanding. Read that again, verse 12. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 26, verse 12. She will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler mm -hmm. when he has found a fountain Come on. and drink of every water near her. Really? By every hedge will she sit down and open her quiver against every arrow. Okay, so because there's young girls in there, I'm not going to explain what that means. So you older sisters, you can pick up what is being said here. Okay, watch this. Give me the book. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 17. Remember now, the scriptures is commanding you say, listen, you must, if your daughter be shameless, make sure that you put a leash around her neck. Okay, that's why it says, our daughters have a care of their body. You've got daughters, you better make sure that you sit on them. Because if you don't, it says, because they're going to abuse themselves through over much liberty. Because they've got too much time on their hands. They're going to abuse themselves. How will they do that? They're going to, when they find it, they're going to be, they're going to open their mouth as a thirsty traveler. They're going to drink of every water near them. And by every hedge, and they are going to sit down and open their quiver against every arrow. That's how they're going to abuse themselves. You understand? That's when teen, that's where that's when teenage pregnancies happen. That's when abortions happen. That's when you see kids having kids. Because why? She's got too much time on her hands. She's not doing chores. She's got too much time. And the time that she has on her hands, guess where the hands are? Or the, the hands where the hands are? On the phone, on social media. What do you think they are talking about on social media? They are talking about how to hook up, when to hook up. What time? What should I wear? How long am I going to be there? So on and so forth. That's what they do with teenage girls. You understand? They might look cute, but they're the devil. The Bible speaks so. Your job is to drive the demon out. That's your job. Okay? Um, Deuteronomy 23, verse 17 now. Watch this. We are going here Sister. to explain. Hold on. We are going here to explain when it says they are going to abuse themselves over too much liberty. So verse 12 is telling you exactly what they're going to do. But when they do that act, this is what the Lord refers to, refers to it as. Deuteronomy 23, verse 17. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 23, verse 17. Come on. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, mm -hmm. nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. So now, it says, this, this, is, this is a law right here. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel. That's the two, that's the young, that's these girls. These girls that are sexually active because they've got too much on their hands. That's why the Lord will this day. They shall, because there was horror in Israel. Who brought the horror in Israel? The sisters. The reason why the land is full of horror is because, not because of the men, it's because of the women. And I'm going to explain that. All this, we coming back. Give me the Leviticus 1929 real quick. The reason why there's boredom in the land is because of the women. 
the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 29. Come on. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore, mm. lest the land fall to whoredom and the land become full of wickedness. You see that thing? It says, don't prostitute your daughter to cause her to be a whore. But how do you prostitute your daughter? Because remember what we read in Sarah 7, verse 23, verse 24, it says, Has thou daughters have a care of their bodies? Meaning what? You must teach them how to dress. That's one of the things that you must do. Teach your daughters how to dress. If you read Titus 2, it tells you exactly what you must do. Teach, them, teach your daughters how to dress, how to speak. You understand? Make sure that they, they are taught how to, uh, to mind the house, to make sure that they order their house are right and so forth. All of that. Sarah 26 goes into that. How to, how to take care of your household and all of that, that the word of God be not blasphemed, how to love their, how to love their husband, how to love their children. Meaning what? A young girl, when she is raised up, she's, pre she's, she's, going, she's prepared to, to become a what? To become a responsible young woman. And guess what? She's also, when she's a, she's a responsible young woman, she's been prepared to become a wife. You understand? So now, here what we are reading, if you don't sit down with your daughters according to Titus 2 and teach them, guess what's going to happen? You are prostituting them because they've got too much time on their hands and that too much time that they have on their hands, they, that's the evil they're going to do. They're going to make sure that the land is filled with hoarding. That's why he says, do not prostitute thy daughters to cause them to be a whore, lest the land fall to hoarding. The reason why you see today in the country there's a lot of horish behavior from the women. The horish, horish behavior in the community is because of the women. Yeah, it's because of the land. The Lord is telling you here. Let the land fall to hoardom and the land become full of wickedness. It's because of the women. That's what the Lord is telling you here. So I need you sisters to really understand what's coming out here. Okay? Go back to Deuteronomy 23, verse 17. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 23, verse 17. Mm -hmm. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Next verse. Come on. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow, for even both these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Now let's break this down, okay? It says... Thou shalt not bring the hire of the whore. Okay, remember it says there shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel. What is the hire of the whore? The hire, because the hire of whore is a hired whore. A hired whore. What is a hired whore? That's a girlfriend. A girlfriend is a hired whore. Because she don't belong to you. You understand? You didn't marry the sister. You just bumping and grinding and doing things that you're not supposed to do that married couples do. You understand? So guess what you are? A hired whore. Because you are used and abused and you are, when, when, you're, you're, when your usefulness is over, you get pushed out. Then the next one comes in. You understand? So that's what the Lord is saying. He says, thou shalt not bring the hire of the whore or the price of a dog. Because guess what? The sisters, all you have to do, I'll give an example. Let's go to the book of Genesis. I'll give you an example of that. Okay, when our forefather Judah slept with a prostitute, or she thought he was a prostitute. Watch this. Give me the book of Genesis 28, verse 15. Let's get some examples here. The book of Genesis, chapter 38, verse 15. When Judah saw her, he thought her to be an harlot. What did he think? He thought her to be an harlot. So this is Tamar, okay? So our forefather Judah, when he saw Tamar, he thought her to be an harlot. Come on. Because she had covered her face. So he thought she was a whore. You understand? Watch this. Verse 16. Come on. And he turned unto her by the way and said, Go to, I pray thee, let me come in unto thee. Stop right there. He says, you see what he said? He said, let me sleep with you. Let me have sex with you. Because he thought she was a whore because she was dressed like one. You understand? That's why today sisters wearing pants, wearing bum shorts, their boots showing. Guess what you is? You are a whore. But based on your dress code alone, you've got a whorish mindset. Your dress code will testify against you. 
You understand? That's why he's like, listen, let me sleep with you. Okay, come on, watch this. For he knew not that she was his daughter-in-law. Come on. And she said, what will thou give me uh -huh. that thou mayest come in unto me? You see the price right there? That's the price of the whole right there. The price of the dog. Because, listen, for, for, for you to sleep with her, she's going to ask you, what are you going to give me in return for you to sleep with me? That's why it says, do not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog. Because that whorish woman, she's a dog. Because, you know, female dog, female dog, that's what they do. The price is what? She's going to ask whatever you can give her. Guess what she's going to do? She's going to open her quiver. That's what's going to happen. That is what we're reading here. You see, she's not even beating around the bush. It says, she said, what will thou give me that thou may come and in unto me? What are you going to give me for you to sleep with me? That's the price of a dog right there. Come on, watch this. And he said, I will send thee a kid from the flock. Mm -hmm. And she said, will thou give me a pledge till thou send it? Come on. Hold and on, he hold said, on. Wait, 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 wait. Read verse 17 again. The book of Genesis, chapter 38, verse 17. Come on. And he said, I will send thee a kid from the flock. And she said, will thou give me a pledge till thou sendest? You see what she's asking? She's asking for some assurances, say, an insurance policy. The pledge, he said, listen, until you send me the kid, meaning a baby goat, until you send me the baby goat, what assurances do I have that you're going to actually send me that baby goat? Because that's the price I'm attaching to my wicked behind. So that she's asking for some assurances. You understand? Watch this. Come on. Verse 18. And he said, what pledge shall I give thee? Mm -hmm. And she said, thy sinet and thy bracelets, and thy stuff that is in thine hand. Come on. And he gave it to her, and came in unto her, and she conceived by him. You see what she did? She said, listen, what assurances are you going to give me until I receive the kid? Because you don't have one now. She said, okay. This is what he said, our forefather said, okay, I'm going to give you the sickness. Okay, so, no, she said, thy sickness, thy bracelet, thy stuff that is in thy hand, give those to me. And then the day you're going to bring the kid, that baby goat, then I'll give those things back to you. But that's the price of a dog. That's the price of a whore. That's the girlfriend. That's what the girlfriend did. A, a higher female price dog. That's what a girlfriend is. So you young girls, you better make sure that you're not a girlfriend because that's what a girlfriend is, according to the Bible. Go back to Deuteronomy 23, verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 18. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God. Come for on. any vow. Mm -hmm. For even both these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. You see that thing right there? Mm -hmm. So what we are reading here is what? Go back to Sarah 26, verse 4. Go back there. The book of Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 26, verse 12. Mm -hmm. She will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler when he had found a fountain. Really? And drink of every water near her. By every hedge will she sit down and open her quiver against every arrow. Against every, every, every arrow. She's going to open a quiver against every arrow. She's not going to check whether he's diseased, whether, whether, he's got a, whether he's got a job, whether he's got a house. None of that. The black women don't check for that. Because that's the mind of a whorish woman. She's going to open her mouth. She's going to wipe. After she opens her mouth, she will eat and wipe her mouth and say, I've done nothing wrong. I'm not going to ask no question. I don't care whether you've got a disease. I don't care whether you're crazy. None of, mm -mm, I don't care about that. All I want is how much you're going to give me for that. So you have to think about it. If she can do that to you, how many more brothers has she done that to? You cannot even count them. You understand? There are so many that what? Give me the book of Proverbs. Okay? Give me Proverbs real quick. Let me show you what happens when she opens her mouth against, uh, she opens her quiver against every, every arrow. This is what happens to the woman. There is, there's a reason why I'm getting on the woman. You young sisters, I'm dealing with the teenagers now. Okay, you young sisters, because I know this is these young sisters today, they are sexually active. 
You understand? They, 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 they are in communication with boys. So you brothers that have young sisters, you better make sure that you must take their phone, okay? Look at the WhatsApp and see exactly what they are talking about. You better, you better do a, what do you think? You better do an audit, okay? You better do an audit on their phone. Check exactly what's on the phone. Hmm? What messages are, what, what the exactly are they talking about? Go to their phone and check, check the picture, see what's in there. You understand? And they guess what? They're gonna get mad. You know why they get mad? Because they've got something to hide. You so you must go through it. And when you see all that evil system down, you better make sure that they get it. Okay? Watch this. Mm. Give me Proverbs 23 to 27. The book of Proverbs, chapter 23, verse 27. Mm -hmm. For a hoe is a deep ditch. And a strange woman is a narrow pit. It says, for a hole is a deep ditch. Now, a ditch is a what? Is a hole. And that's what a ditch is, is a hole. It says, for a hole is a deep ditch. So go back to Psalm 26, verse 12. I'm just going to ask. I'm not going to go deep. I'm not going to be graphic on this. Okay? Psalm 26, verse 12. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 26, verse 12. Mm -hmm. She will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler when he has found a fountain and drink of every water near her. By every hedge will she sit down and open her quiver against every arrow. Because when she opens her quiver, guess what happens? Go back to Proverbs 23, verse 27. The book of Proverbs, chapter 23, verse 27. For a hole is a deep ditch. That's what happens. That's what happens to her quiver. That's what happens to her quiver. I'm going to leave it right there. Okay? Watch this. Give me... Mm -hmm. Let me see if I want to go there. No, no, not yet, not yet, not yet. Give me the book of Sirach 42, verse 10. Ecclesiastes, chapter 42, verse 10. Because we need to understand something. Because when these, shameless, these daughters are shameless and they are not being taught... Guess what? They are what? They learn evil through their idleness. So because they are idle, they learn much evil. And guess what? We just read the evil that they do. They will open their quiver against every arrow. They become deep ditches. That's what happens. They become iron walls. They become female prize dogs. That's what happens to these young dogs, these young girls. You understand? And when they grow up, they become pumas and bulldogs. That's what happens. Bulldogs. They are, they are big mouth, they are angry, they are bitter, they hate the man, they hate life, they just hate everybody, they hate their children, you understand? They, you see them today, you go to shop right, you go to pick and pay, just a lot of angry women. Why? Because when they were growing up, they were never taught nothing. Okay? Watch this. Um, Sirach 42 verse 10. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 42 verse 10. Mm -hmm. In her virginity, lest she should be defiled and gotten with child in her father's house. In her father's house. Remember, you are in your father's house. As long as you are not married, you are still under your father's house. Okay? It doesn't matter if you have your own place. It doesn't mean nothing. As long as your father has not given his hand in marriage, your hand in marriage, guess what? You are still under your father's house. And if you don't have a father in the house, the leadership is your father. You understand? And guess what? Read that part again. Read the text. I want this thing to marinate in the mind of the sister. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 42, verse 10. Mm -hmm. In Come her on. virginity, mm -hmm. lest she should be defiled and gotten with child in her father's house. Now watch this. In her virginity, you understand? Lest she should be defiled and gotten with child in her father's house. Now let's deal with the defiling process. Give Jeremiah 3 verse 1. Lest she should be defiled. Here, here she is. She never dealt with a man. She's a young woman. And also over and above that, she never dealt with any man. She never had sex. Then what happens? She becomes defiled under her father's roof. She falls pregnant. That's, that, that's, like a, that's a normal thing to do. Excuse me, in the black community. It's normal. Nobody even is nobody surprised about it. Okay? Watch this. Jeremiah 3 verse 1. The book of Jeremiah, 
chapter 3, verse 1. Come on. They say, if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? Come on. Shall not that the land be greatly polluted? It shall not what? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? Come on. But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. Mm -hmm. Yet return again to me, says the Lord. So now, when this, guess what? When this sister, when this teenager, she gets defiled, in, the one says, defiled in her father's house, gotten with child in her father's house. Guess what? This is how she gets defiled. It says, shall not that land be greatly polluted, but thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. Meaning what? You are playing the whore in your father's house. Because it says, the land is polluted. How does the land get polluted? The land is talking about the woman, by the way. The land is talking about the woman. That land becomes greatly polluted. How? Because when Gan comes, she does her, she, he does his thing. Then Gen comes, he does his thing. You understand? Um, Tapelo comes, he does his thing. The land is polluted. You understand? The land becomes polluted. That's what that means. That's why sisters come into the truth. You, you've been around the block. You've been doing some stuff. You better just wait. Okay, until they start to be gracefully exited. Okay, yeah, that takes time. Yeah. It takes years to do that. The stuff, Jabulani stuff, and Bongani stuff must go up. Okay, so because women are only supposed to deal with one man all their life. That's it. Because once you start to deal with multiple men, guess what happens to you? Your spirit, all the men, the spirit of the men that you've been dealing with. All those spirits are going to sit on you. You understand? All of those spirits will sit on you. Because sexual intercourse is a spiritual thing. Don't get it twisted. Okay? Go back to Sarah 42, verse 10. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 42, verse 10. Mm -hmm. In her virginity, lest she should be defiled and gotten with child in her father's house, and having an husband, lest she should misbehave herself, and when she is married, lest she should be buried. Because guess what? Because she's been having so much sex in her father's house, she is what? She falls pregnant, she doesn't want the baby, she doesn't want the family to find out, guess what she does? She goes and she has an abortion. The time is time, the, the, when the time comes for her to get married, guess what happens? She can't. No, she gets married, but now it's time for her to have children, she cannot have children. She can't conceive. Not because she's barren, because that's oh, the Lord did that. No, no, because she did that. She made herself to be barren. It's not, it wasn't a natural thing, but she did that to herself. Okay, you understand? Um, watch this. Because what we are reading here, what we are reading here, when it says, lest she should behave herself, and when she's married, lest she should be barren. Watch this. Give me the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 21. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 21. Mm -hmm. Then they shall bring out the damsel to the door of her father's house, and the man of a city shall stone her with stones that she die, because she had wrought folly in Israel to play the whore in her father's house. Mm -hmm. So shall thou put evil away from among you. You see what it was, how it was done back then? Because what would happen is that you get married, right? Okay? Because the marriages were arranged. You get married. And then now it's time to consummate the marriage. What would happen is that they would put a cloth on the, in, the, in the bed chamber, in the wedding chamber, okay? So that when you consummate the marriage now, so that when the hymen is broken, the blood must be on the cloth. The parents will collect the tokens of their daughter's virginity as proof that she never dealt with a man. But if they discover that she she actually, she's been sneaking around in her father's house playing the whore, like we read in Surah 42, this is what would happen to her. She'd be put to death. She was stoned to death. You understand? Read that again. Read verse 20. Start at verse 20. Read 20 and 21. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 20. Mm -hmm. 
But if this thing be true, and the tokens of virginity be not found for a damsel, then they shall bring out the damsel to the door of her father's house, and the man of her city shall stone her with stones that she die, because she had wrought folly in Israel to play the whore in her father's house, so shall thou put evil away from among you. You see that thing? We need to make sure that we put the evil away from among us. That's what it's saying right there. Because the daughter of the tokens, the, the tokens of the daughter of the, the, the daughter's token of virginity was not found. Guess what? That would mean what? She played the whore in her father's house. You understand? She was defiled in her father's house. And some of them, they, they were there for pregnant. They don't get rid of the baby. You understand? So now already you brought shame to your father's house. You have brought shame to your father's house. So you young girls that are coming up, okay, you better make sure that you keep your legs closed, open the Bible. You understand? That's the motto. Keep legs closed, Bible open. Not the other way around. Mm -mm. Not Bible closed, legs open. No. Because women tend to say, nah, I did not hear what he said. Let me repeat myself. Legs closed, Bible open. Make no study. Apply yourself. Okay? Watch this. Um, give me... Mm, let me see if I want to go there. No, no, not yet. Not yet. Okay? Now, I'm going to go to a couple of videos now. Okay? Um, I'm going to go to a couple of videos. Watch this. Because we're dealing with um, uh, teenage, teenagers having sex. And when teenagers, there is, there, this, this is the process. They, are, they don't get taught God's commandments. They are not given responsibilities. They are idle. That idol that teaches much evil. The evil that he teaches them is what? They, what they, the evil that they start to do is what they start to deal with men. Okay? They start to deal with boys. They start to have sex. When they have sex, guess what happens? They fall pregnant. When they fall pregnant, some of them have abortion. Some of them keep the baby. Okay? And some of them die while they are pregnant. Some of them die while they are giving birth. Some of them die right after they give birth. That's what's going on today. In South Africa, across all 11 provinces. Is it 11? It's 11, right? Nine, sir. Oh, okay, nine. Yeah, okay, thank you. Nine provinces. Across the nine provinces, mm -hmm. that's what's going on. Eastern Cape and Western Cape being the highest. Okay, watch this. Let me, let me see which one I want to start with. Mm, I'm going to start with this one first. Oh, praise it. So this is some program called MTV Sugar. Okay, 16 and pregnant. So let's pay attention. MTV Sugar presents 16 and pregnant. So soon this time. This time set in and around Johannesburg. Your body's not fully developed. Three girls are about to become... You see, that's another point right there. So keep those things in mind. Their body's not fully developed. So a 16-year-old is not, that body is not fully developed to what? To carry a baby and give that to one. Okay? From teenage mothers. <laughs> that's the father right there. Okay? And that's the whole manga man. Okay? Our relationship will never be the same, okay? How will these teens deal with early motherhood? and lives in Rockville, Soweto. Ah, come on, come on, come on, come on, Tato. Her parents divorced a few years. You see now, just, just, just listen to what this, uh, this uh, narrator is saying. Her parents divorced, okay? Recipe for disaster right there. Her parents divorced, okay? ago, but she's still close to her dad. She lives with her strong-willed mother and her great-grandmother. I, I want you brothers and sisters to hear what just been said here. I know some of it went over your head. Let's go back a little bit. She lives with her strong-willed mother and her great-grandmother. She does what? She lives with a strong-willed mother. That's why they divorced her. Because of what? That big black 
this that big mouth of the black woman. You hear what they say? Strong-willed mother, meaning what? She is stubborn and rebellious. Let's get that in the rug real quick. I want to show you the recipe for success, for disaster. Because these black women, they don't submit to their men. And the grandmothers don't help either. Because the grandmother is right there. The grandmother is saying, I'm Tanami. Unga la control. That's what they say. And guess what happened? Now she's divorced. Okay? Now she's left with the grandmother and a pregnant and a pregnant teenager. That's what's going on today in the black community. Okay? Give me that in Sarah 26 and verse 26. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 26, verse 26. Mm -hmm. A woman that honoreth her husband shall be judged wise of all. Really? But she that dishonoreth him in her pride shall be counted ungodly of all. That's what you are seeing right there. Now she says she's been raised by her strong will, mother. And the grandmother is right there as well. So that, 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 that father right there, he never had a chance in the house because he had three women in the house just speaking evil of him. You understand? Now the father is gone, the girl is pregnant. The grandmother is sitting there. Now if the household just filled with women, bitter about the man, hating the man, you understand? Which man? The black man. Okay? Read that again, Sarah 26, verse 26. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 26, verse 26. Come on. A woman that honoreth her husband shall be judged wise of all. Mm -hmm. But she that dishonoreth him in her pride shall be counted ungodly of all. But she that dishonoreth the man in her pride shall be counted ungodly of all. Because these women are very prideful. They don't want to submit to the black man. Guess what? You are not going to get the kingdom without the black man. Understand that. You don't submit to the black man, you will not get the kingdom. I hope you sisters can understand that thing. Watch this. Read verse 27 now. A loud crying woman and a scold shall be sought out to drive away the enemies. That's what she's good for. She's good for driving away the enemies. What that means? You ever, you ever hear these uh, debt collectors? You know, they're very rude on the phone. These debt collectors. When they call and say, Mr. So-and-so, you know, you are owing. Yeah. Listen, you just, you, your job, you just give, give the phone to your wife yeah, and say, you talk to them. <laughs> and she's going to drive them away. That's what the Bible is talking about. It says, a loud crying woman and a scold shall be sought out to drive away, away the enemy. But guess what? Now she, starts, she forgets how she, she drives away the enemy. Now she starts to see the black man as the enemy. That's what we want to see. You see that thing? Mm -hmm. Now let's play on. Fun coming to see Granny. I missed you a lot. Tato is a typical teenager who likes nothing more than to dress up, dance, and party with her. Mm -hmm. You see that thing? <laughs> I need you, brothers and sisters, to be you young girls. I need you to pay attention to this. Listen to the things that she likes to do, which is the reason why she ended up pregnant. Coming to see Granny. I missed you a lot. Tato is a typical teenager who likes nothing more than to dress up, dance, and party with her big circle of friends. You see that thing? She likes nothing more than to do what? To party and to dance. That's what she likes to do. So she wait, wait how do you think she got pregnant? Because she had too much time on her hand. Too much, so much time that she was able to go out, to go party. Guess what happens when young girls go out to party? They get drunk. What happens when they get drunk? They get raped. You understand? They have sex. They end up pregnant. And that's what you are seeing here. You understand? That is what you are seeing right here. This year, she fell hopelessly in love with an older guy called Muketi. Hmm. One night, she snuck out of her mother's house with an old. This year, she fell hopelessly in love with an older guy called Muketi. One night, she snuck out of her mother's house to party with him. That night, they had 
and unprotected sex. Tato loves Makiti, but she doesn't know if she can trust him now that they've discovered they are going to be parents. Now, I hope you brothers and sisters have just have picked up what just went down. You see what she did? She snuck out of her house. Okay, she snuck out of her father's house. What happened to her? She ended up pregnant because she likes to party. She likes to go out. As a teenager, she's supposed to what? Know how to clean the house, know how to cook. She's supposed to know how to take care of herself, to study, to make sure that she studies at school. She's making sure that she gets her grades up and all that. That's what's supposed to be going on in her mind. Not the things that we're, we're hearing about. You understand? So what did she do? There are 42 that's night. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 42, verse 9. The father waketh for the daughter when no man knoweth. The father waketh for the daughter, meaning the father watcheth for the daughter. That's the father's job. But because you had that big, big mouth black woman that drove the man out the house, now the father that's supposed to be a watcher is not there no more. So who's watching over this, this, this child? The black woman. You understand? Read on. And the care for her taketh away sleep. Mm -hmm. When she is young, lest she pass away, the flower of her age, and being married, lest she should be hated. So when it says when she is young, because when she's young, that's the father's job to make sure that she, he takes care of, her, of his daughter, to make sure that the daughter is behaving correctly, because what is the father doing? The father is preparing her to be married. He's preparing, he's preparing her to become a young woman that is going to be what? Old enough to get married. It says, lest she pass away the flower of her age, meaning what? She reaches menopause. She reaches menopause without what? Without being married. Because guess what? The father's job is to make sure that she does not plant the flower of her age. Menopause. Watch this. And this is what the father will do. Give me Sirach 7. Sirach chapter 7, verse 20. Sirach chapter 7, verse 25. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 25. Come on. Marry thy daughter, mm -hmm. and so shall thou have performed a weighty matter. Mm -hmm. But give her to a man of understanding. You see that thing? It says, marry thy daughter. That's the instruction to the father. And so shall thou have performed a weighty matter. But give her to a man of understanding. Because you giving your daughter over to another man to take care of, that's a weighty matter. That's a heavy matter. Because that man wasn't there when you were raising your daughter's up. He wasn't there. You understand? You better make sure that that man, he is in this book and he applies what is written. You understand? He's not a, he's not a, he's not a hustler. Okay? Go back to Sirach 42, verse 9 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 42, verse 9. Mm -hmm. The father waketh for the daughter when no man knoweth, and the care for her taketh away sleep. Mm -hmm. When she is young, lest she pass away the flower of her age, and being married, lest she should be hated. Because guess what? At that point, when she passed the flower of the age, because women have biological clocks, men don't. Okay. Now she's older. Now she's past menopause, so it becomes very difficult for her to conceive. And when she, if she does conceive, it becomes a very high risk pregnancy. It becomes a high risk pregnancy. Okay. So what? That's what we are reading. So the father's job is to make sure that that does not happen. Okay. But guess what? When you have, give me that in Sirach 25 as well. When you don't have this in the house. What we're looking at here on the screen is exactly what happened. There are 25 verse 1. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 25, verse 1. Mm -hmm. In three things I was beautified and stood up beautiful both before God and man. The unity of brethren, the love of neighbors, and the man and the wife that agree together. Because there was no agreement between the man and the wife. What does that agreement mean? Meaning what? The wife must submit herself completely to the man. That's what it means when it says a man and a wife that agree together. 
because the wife must agree to with the black man because her job is to submit and subject herself to the husband, to, the, to her lord. You understand? Because you sisters, your job, mm, you know the topic of marriage will never get old. Okay, let me just digress just for a second. Your job, sisters, your job is to tailor your behavior, your thought process, the way you conduct yourself, the way you think must be according to your Lord's thinking. Meaning what? The type of decisions that you would make when he's not around, let's say he's traveling somewhere and all of that, is the type of decisions that he would make if he was there with you. So your mind must be according to his mind, not the other way around. No. Your job is to serve him. Your job is to glorify him. His job is to serve the Lord and glorify the Lord. That's the order that a virtuous woman must understand. If you don't understand that order, you're going to twitch like a robot. You're not going to understand what's coming up. Okay? Um, Sarah 42, verse 10 now. Sarah 42, verse 10. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 42, verse 10. Come on. In her virginity, lest she should be defiled and gotten with child in her father's house. It says, lest she should be defiled and gotten with child in her father's house. 15 and pregnant. That's what you just saw now. You saw she was raised up by a strong-willed mother. Meaning what? What does that mean? She was raised by a rebellious black woman. That's what it's telling you right there. You understand? Women that do not want to submit themselves to the men. That's who she, that's who raised that, 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 that teenage up. The father wasn't there. You understand? But she's still in her father's roof because the father never gave his, 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 his daughter's hand in marriage. That never happened. So she's still under her father's roof. Okay? That is what, um, what we're reading here. Guess what she did? She, did, she was defiled under her father's roof. Now she's pregnant. She's 16 years old. She fell hopelessly in love with the what? With the whole manga. Because that whole manga, guess what? They, why, why they go to the party? They go there to meet teenage young girls like this one. You understand? Now that they've discovered they are going to be parents. Hey, yeah. no. Tato lied they had unprepared with him that night they had unprotected sex now they had unprotected sex okay watch this and guess what if you are married there's no need for you to be worried about that why 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 are you worried about what, what you worried about for? there's no need to be worried about stuff like that when you're married watch this give me the book of hebrews chapter 13 verse 4 watch this Remember, it says they had unprotected sex. First and foremost, there should not be any talk of that because when it says unprotected sex, that means they have a license to have protected sex. And what is the protection? The condom. No, protected sex according to the Bible is called marriage. That's protected sex. Hebrews 13 verse 4. Watch this. The book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4. Come on. Marriage is honorable in all. Mm -hmm. And the paid and defied. But homemongers and adulterers, God will judge. This is God's judgment. What you are looking at here, this is God's judgment right here. This is the most like God's judgment. He says, but homemongers and adulterers, God will judge. This is God's judgment right here. She fell pregnant. Okay? That's God's judgment. Because it was not under the protection of marriage. It was under the protection of what? No. It was under the protocol. Before they, 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 when they were, when they was um, having sex with the condom, in their mind, they were under the protection of the condom. But there is a God. Okay? Watch this. Let's keep playing. Let me see what time spent by one. <laughs> Mpansa is 16 and lives in Kalinan, a mining town where the biggest diamond in the world was found. Mpansa lives with her older brother and her grandparents. She doesn't live with her mother, but her mother is the closest person in her life. Mpansa 
Sima loves animals and wants to be a vet one day. I think it's symbiosis. By the way, all these stories that the background stories they're giving you is to confuse these young teenagers. You understand? The reason why they keep mentioning, no, she wants to be a vet one day. She wants, listen, all of these things is to, con is to make sure that when the real, the real issue comes up, you don't pay attention to the real issue. You pay attention, you know what, yeah, you know what, um, I hope she can be able to, to achieve her dreams, you know, because she wants to be a vet. Now you no longer focus on the fact that she played the role in her father's house. Okay, so I need you brothers and sisters to pay attention what's coming up. And wants to be a vet one day. I think it's symbiosis. Ntlantla's best friend is Yolanda. They grew up together and have been close for most of their lives. They study together and tell each other all their dreams for the future. This year, Ntlantla fell in love with an older man and they had a sexual relationship. After skipping her... Now, let's think now. As, as this girl, she's 16, she's pregnant. She fell in love with who? She fell in love with an older man. Why would she be doing that? Because she's looking for her father. That's why she's got daily issues. She's looking for her father. And she thinks that she's going to find her father in the men, in the bedrooms of the men that she sleeps with. She thinks she's going to find her father there. You understand? That's why they are sleeping with older men. Because literally, they are actually, in their mind, they are looking for a father. But guess what? They find what they find. Wicked Negroes that are only interested in sex. The wicked Negroes that are, don't, don't send them back. Listen, hey, why are you here? Go back to your mother's house. You are still a teenager. Right? You, must go to, you must go to school. They don't say that. You understand? And that's why you see what you see here period a local clinic confirmed that she's 16 and pregnant at the clinic they also tested me for HIV and AIDS and told me that I'm HIV positive now like listen this painful to watch okay this is painful to watch this is very painful to watch because now you think about it now now listen now is the whole mess okay she snuck out she 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 slept with a boy older older than her and guess what now what's going on she's pregnant one two now she's hiv positive you see that thing this is a man right here, okay? And HIV is an STD, it's a sexually transmitted disease. Listen, this is only the cases that are recorded. What about the cases that are not recorded, that are not aired on television? They, they are even more than the ones that you see on TV, okay? This is the reality of the situation that we have in the nation of Israel. Okay, watch this. Let's go to the book. Mm. Give me the book of Samuel. Give me first Samuel real quick. Let me show you what the Lord said about this thing. First Samuel chapter three. First Samuel chapter three and verse ten. You're gonna start at verse ten. You know what? Mm. Yeah, read verse eleven. First Samuel three verse eleven. Let's just get to the point. First book of Samuel, chapter 3, verse 11. Come on. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel at which both the ears of everyone that heareth it shall tingle. You see what the Lord says he's going to do? He says, I'm going to do a thing in the nation of Israel at which both the ears of everyone that heareth it shall tingle. I Meaning he's going to make your ears to ring. You understand? When you hear the stuff, you're going to... I can't believe this stuff. And that's what we are seeing right here. This has to really make your stomach turn. This is what the Lord is talking about. He says, I'm going to make sure that I'm going to do a thing in Israel because they are rebellious as well. Both the ears of those that hear it, their ears are going to tingle. They are going to itch. 
You understand? That is what's going on here. 16, she's pregnant, now she's positive. HIV. That's a big blow. You understand? So that's why we are so hard on you, sister. The reason why I said, go back to Sarah 26. Sarah 26, verse 10. I mentioned it earlier because I know some of you forgotten already. Okay? Sarah 26, verse 10. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 26, verse 10. If thy daughter be shameless, keep her in straightly, lest she abuse herself through over much liberty. You see that thing? If thy daughter be shameless, keep her in straightly. That's why we're supposed to make sure that we, we watch over the sister. When, and we're not just talking about the teenager. We're talking about you sisters that are in the camp. We're talking to you. We want to watch over you. Okay, some of the things that you're going to be corrected on, we're not gonna like that. We don't give a damn. Because if you don't follow the counsel, guess what's gonna happen to you? You're the one that is gonna end up with the stuff and the man is going to be gone. That's why we have to be hard on you, sister. Because it's easy for the man to say, that's not my baby. Okay, I didn't sleep with you. I don't know you. You understand? It's not me. What you gonna do? You are left with what they gave you. They give you a disease and say, no, I, it's not me. It must be somebody else, because me, I'm fine. Guess what? You're the one that is going to be left with the disease, the gift that keeps on giving. Okay? So that's the thing. So that's why we have to be so hard on you, sisters, because this is what happens when you don't pay attention. This is what happens when you don't follow counsel, you don't follow command. This is what's going to happen. And this is a teenager. What happens if you are you are age? You sisters at the age that you are at, you don't follow counsel, the consequences will be much greater. So we that's why we bring classes like this out to make sure that you pay attention, you don't end up like this, or even worse. You understand? Eight and told me that I'm HIV positive. At first, I could not believe the test results. I told my boyfriend, but he said it can't be true. You see that thing? <laughs> he, he, she now she told the whole manga man, and he says, no, it can't be true. What does that mean? No, it's not me. I'm not the one that did it. You understand? I'm not the one. It must. There must be somebody else. So guess what? Now she has to. She has to. Now she's left to deal with this thing on her own. That's why we get on you, sister. Because the men can just turn around and say, "No, no, I didn't do that." Now guess what? Your face is cracked and is on the floor. Now we have to pick it up. Okay. So it's better you pay attention. You follow the command. Follow counsel. You understand? Cancel with every action you take. Follow. Ask for cancel. Don't be doing things on your own. You understand? Ah, boy. Um, I'm going to go to 6. Wait, let me see. We've said goodbye from the last just so long. Yeah. Okay, we're going to go to, let me see the time stamp on the next time stamp I want to go to. So we saw Tato, she was 16 and pregnant. Uh, that's in Tanta now. Let's see the next victim, because these are victims, okay? Vanele is 16. She lives in Clip Town, Soweto. She loves spending time with her friends, and after finishing school, she wants to become famous. So just listen to the things they want to become. This one wants to be famous. How do what 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 do, what do these women have to go through in order for them to acquire that fame? Your peltusis, because that's what they look up to. Your kanimbaus, that's what they look up to. What do you think these women had to do to get to the fame that they have? They had to open their quiver against every arrow to rise to the top. So guess what? This is the beginning of it. 
You understand? And her goal, her objective is to become a celebrity. Hmm. Her mother had her when she was a teenager and sent her to Soweto as a baby to live with her grandmother. I now I want to stop right there for a second. Okay. Her mother, she had her when she was a teenager. And when she had her, when she was a teenager, guess where she sent the child to? She sent the child to the grandmother. This is what we teach about all the time on the street. That women come to Jovek, they have sex, they pop babies, they take the babies, they send them to the grandmother. They continue to socialize Jovek. That's what they do. Give that in Ezekiel 16, verse 44. Ezekiel 16, verse 44. Watch this. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 16, verse 44. Come on. Behold, everyone that uses proverbs shall use this proverb against thee, uh -huh. saying, As is the mother, so is her daughter. You see what he's saying right there? Everyone that uses proverbs shall use this proverb against thee. What is the proverb? As is the mother, so is her daughter. Like mother, like daughter. You see what just happened? The mother had her when she was a teenager. She's having sex as a teenager. Now she's pregnant, just like her mother did. It's a vicious cycle. You understand? A vicious cycle. And now listen to what the thing she says. I want to be a celebrity. Okay? As is the mother, so is her daughter. Next verse. Thou art thy mother's daughter mm -hmm. that loatheth her husband and her children. Stop right there. It says, thou art thy mother's daughter. You are your mother's daughter. You understand? That loathed her husband, meaning she hates the husband. Your mother hated the husband and her children. She hated the children. She hated her own children too. Because after she had the baby, guess what? She took the baby. She sent the, she sent the baby to the grandmother. Now the grandmother has to take responsibility for her mother. The, the grandmother wasn't there when she opened her leg. Now is the, the responsibility of the grandmother to take care of the baby now. And these grandmothers also, they receive those things. They accept that nonsense. So, but if you have a baby, you, you sleep around, you fall pregnant, don't send the baby to the grandmother. No, no. When you attempt to do it, the grandmothers must say, mm -mm, I was not there. You're on your own. You better deal with that. Listen, I'm older now. I'm old. I've lived my life. Now I just want to sit down. I don't want to do nothing. I don't want to be dealing with baby. But the grandmothers, they involve these young girls to continue to have sex and pop more babies. You understand? Read that again, verse 45. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 16, verse 45. Mm -hmm. Thou art thy mother's daughter that loathed her husband and her children, and thou art the sister of thy sisters which loathed her husbands and their children. Your mother was a Hittite and your father an Amorite. You see what the Lord now, the Lord is casting us out. He's saying we are Hamites to him now. We are behaving like Hamites. So therefore you are Hamites to me right now. You understand? Because that's what Hamites do. So now he's saying thou art thy mother's daughter that loathed her husband and her children. Thou art the sister of thy sisters which loathed their husbands and their children. You see that thing? That's why today the black women, that's why when they say ladies night on Thursday, they come together, they speak evil of the men. And all of them, if you find out if they are married, none of them are married. All of them, they are baby mamas. You understand? And those that are not baby mamas, they cannot have children because they've been what? They've been around the block. Deep ditches now, they are. You understand? It takes years for the parachute to swing back in. Okay? Watch this. Now, let's play on. I never knew the parents' love. I only knew Granny's love. And she always tell me one thing. School is the best medicine in your life. If you can finish with school, you can see how bright your future is. Okay, let's move on to the next uh, time stamp. You see, grandmother, you know, I remember this one day. Um, just sidebar, story time. I was taking my my daughter, my firstborn, I took her to, she was going to crash at the point at the time. And when we got there, there we, we spoke to the principal. 
I took her in and she met the principal and all of that. And the, th the first thing that the principal asked was that, is she raised by her granny now? That's what they asked, actually. They say, is she raised by the granny? I said, no. But me, because I'm curious, I said, why you ask? She said, the problem is the, the, the children that, that are raised by their mothers, they tend to be very spoiled. They, tend, they are very spoiled. They are very disrespectful. They don't pay attention. They don't follow instruction and all of that. Because why? Granny, granny, they let them get away with that. So that's why she's doing what she, that's why she was able to do this, to fall pregnant. Because grandmothers, they involve the evil. You understand? I'm done, I'm all of that nonsense. Okay? That's why these teenagers that are living with their grandmothers, they continue to fall pregnant. Okay? Um, Fanele's life is about to change forever. She met a boy at a party and they had a sexual relationship for a while. Hmm. You see where they met? She met a boy at a party. Let's go to the book of Peter. Okay. Let's go to the book of Second Peter. Second Peter chapter 2. Second Peter chapter 2 and verse 18. Let's start there. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 13. Come on. And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. As they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. They do what? They that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. It says they count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. So they take pleasure in rioting. The daytime, when it says daytime, meaning what? It doesn't matter what time it is. They what? Rioting is going to parties and all of that. That's why during, especially now, there's parties everywhere. During the daytime, parties. During the nighttime, parties. So they count it pleasure. They, found, they find pleasure in that. Why? Go back to Ezekiel 16, verse 49. I want to show you that. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 49. This is, this is the contributor of the pleasure, the, the reason why they, found, they find pleasure in unrighteousness. Okay, watch this. Ezekiel 16, verse 49. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 16, verse 49. Come on. Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom. Mm -hmm. Pride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness was in her and in her daughters. An abundance of idleness was in her and in her daughters. Abundance of idleness. That abundance of idleness is teaching the young girls to do what we are seeing here on the screen. That abundance of idleness. That's why it says, behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom. What was they doing in Sodom? This is what was going on during Sodom and Gomorrah. You understand? That's one of the things that was going on during Sodom and Gomorrah. Abundance of idleness and evil. Sexual immorality, homosexuality, teenage pregnancy. That is what was going on back then during the time of Sodom and Gomorrah. Guess what? The same thing is happening today to our young girls. Okay? Read that again, verse 49. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 16, verse 49. Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom. Pride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness was in her and in her daughters. Mm -hmm. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. They didn't care about that thing. They didn't care about their own people. They just care about themselves and how they felt. Let's go back. Go back to Second Peter 2, verse 13 again. Second book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 13. Mm -hmm. And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that counted pleasure to riot in the daytime. Mm -hmm. Spots they are and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. You see that thing? It says sporting themselves with their own deceiving because they are deceiving themselves. This one is going to parties, having sex, getting pregnant. You understand? Now she's saying she wants to be a celebrity. Deceive, they're sporting themselves with their own deceiving. Go ahead. Having eyes full of adultery. That's the key right there. Having eyes full of adultery, the lust of the eyes. Having eyes full of adultery. Come on. 
and that cannot cease from sin. They cannot stop doing that. They cannot stop having, they cannot stop that sin, having eyes full of adultery. Come on. Beguiling unstable souls. Because these men that hook up with these young girls, these, these young girls, they are unstable souls. That they are being beguiled by these whole men. It is beguiling unstable souls because they are still children. They are kids. They don't know anything. That's what we read in Deuteronomy 31. It's children which have not known anything. These girls don't know nothing. Okay? They are dumb as a rock. They need to be taught. So what you are seeing here says, beguiling unstable souls. Come on. And heart they have exercised with covetous practices. Mm -hmm. Cursed children. Cursed children. That's what you are seeing. Cursed children. Okay? Let's play on. We're going to push up to 0902. Will Fanele still be able to reach for her dreams now that she's about to become a teenage mother? Oh, yeah. oh. Like, that sounds like an oxymoron. A teenage mother. You hear that? That's an oxymoron. A teenage mother. You understand? A teenage mother. A teenager cannot be a mother, period. But in today's world, that's what's going on now. The things that are impossible, because through our weakness, through our wickedness, we're making the impossible possible because of our wickedness. That's how wicked they become. Okay? Me now my life is messed up. Mm. And I was like, no, me now my life is messed up. And I'm dreaming so big. Mm. Like, you know me, I want to be a celebrity. <laughs> you see that thing? Like, just listen to the conversation. You understand? They just talking about dumb stuff. Because why? Idleness teaches much evil. This is the conversation that these teenage girls are having. You understand? And when they are not pregnant, but they are sexually active, guess what? They are not talking about their dreams. No, no, they are talking about what? Sleeping, having more sex. When they fall pregnant, now they start to remember, oh, by the way, Kwanji, I want to be a celebrity. You can't make this stuff up. <laughs> and I'll be one. <laughs> one of my clothes. You see the mindset? The mindset is not going to change because these are, these are children. That body is not even fully developed. It's not fully developed to carry a baby, let alone think for itself. Okay? This friends is Hazel. She is older than me and has supported me ever since I told her I'm pregnant. Yeah. You see that thing? He says... This, you see that the, the friend, look at the friend. The friend has a, they has a daughter as well. The friend has a daughter, has a child. And why wouldn't she support her? She's supporting her because now we are in the same people, you and I. We are the same. Watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes real quick. Okay. Give me Sirach. Mm. Give me Sirach chapter 13. Ecclesiastes chapter 13 verse 16. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 13, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Every beast loveth his like, Come on. and every man loveth his neighbor. You see, it says, every beast loveth his like. Everybody likes those that are like them. And every man loveth his neighbor. Watch this. Next verse. All flesh consorteth according to kind, uh -huh. and a man will cleave to his like. You see that thing? It says, all flesh consorted according to kind, and a man will cleave to his like. That's what you see. It says, birth of, it says what? Birth of a feather flock together. Mm -hmm. That's what you're seeing here. This is peer pressure. They come together for ease because they were going around opening their quiver against every oral. Now this one is pregnant. This one became, she, she fell pregnant first before that other one. Now that one is followed suit, she's pregnant now as well. And this one is supporting him. You, you see that thing? So now they know, okay, if you fall pregnant, don't worry, my friend. We are all together in this. That's some evil stuff. Okay? Read that again, verse 16. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 13, verse 16. Mm -hmm. All flesh consorteth according to kind. And a man will cleave to his like. And a man will cleave to his like. Watch this. Read that chapter 13, verse 1 now. Read that one. 
Ecclesiastes chapter 13, verse 1. He that touches peach shall be defiled therewith. Mm -hmm. And he that has fellowship with the proud man shall be like unto him. You see that thing? If you touch peach, remember peach is uh, peach, peach is what tar, tar. The tar, the, the material they used to create tar. That goes back to what slime peach. That's what we read uh, when we're going on Genesis 14. Okay, those of you that those of you that study, I'm only talking about those that study. Okay, so if you touch peach, if you're working with peach, there's no way that peach is not going to stain. Eventually, it will stain. That's what's going on here. You cannot be walking, you cannot be hanging out with people that smoke, and eventually you don't smoke. Eventually, you're gonna end up smoking. You cannot be hanging around with people that going around, sleeping around, and think that people are going to fall in the same trap. You will. That's what, the, what, that's what the Lord is saying. Okay? So our job, brothers and sisters, is to be leaders in the truth. You don't follow anybody in the world. They must follow you. Is that simple? Okay? Let's play on. Are you saying you didn't use the condom? Yes, girl. That's what I'm trying to say. We didn't use the condom. You, you see that thing? You know, the way she's talking about it, remember what was the, the video we were watching about those boys, those gangs that were having knives, talking, talking, talking so evil about, about killing and stabbing. As if they are just talking about this in That's the same conversation here. This conversation is not as it becomes as the gospel of Christ. This is evil communication. Give me that in First Corinthians chapter 15. Okay, First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Come on. Be not deceived. Mm -hmm. Evil communications corrupt good manners. That's what you're seeing here. This is evil communication. It corrupts good manners. The good manners is what? The laws of God. That's God's commandment. Evil communication corrupts good manners. And that is what you see here. Because of their evil communication, they are coming together. Now, it has corrupted the good manners, which is what? To walk uprightly. Because look at the first one. The first one is for a baby, is friends to this one. These two are left. No, no, let these two. This one is left, because this one you can see. She's confused of what she is, okay? This one is confused. This one, she's gonna follow suit. You understand? Evil communication corrupts good manners. Now, these two are setting a very poor example. This one is pregnant. This one, you know, this one is given birth. This one is pregnant. This one is a lesbian. What's left? There's no good examples around this one with the yellow pen. No good example. And that's what's going on today in the nation of Islam. You understand? Our job is to push the gospel out so our people can be, we can be a light to our people that are living in darkness. That's the job. Okay? Um, let's play on. Was it that day you got pregnant? No, it's not that day. It was maybe the fourth time. Hmm. Yeah. That means, you see that? It had gotten so, so bad, because at the beginning, at the beginning, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters, okay? One thing I can tell you is that women lie, okay? Let me say that again. Women will lie to your face. They will lie to your face. Hmm. Let me see if I should play this video. Give me one second. Let me see something. Uh, one second. Perhaps this will set things in order. Okay. Just give me one second, brothers and sisters. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to play a different video now. It's not part of the class, but it's going to be for a class that I'm building up. It's coming up in the near future. Just look out for that thing. Okay. Danielle Marsh versus Torrance Reed. Marsh versus Reed. 26-year-old Danielle and her mother were in court to address her ex-boyfriend. Yes. Uh, now, this is part of another class that I'm going to put together, but just pay attention to this. Okay, just listen. Danielle Marsh versus Torrance Reed. Marsh versus Reed. 26-year-old Danielle and her mother were in court to address her ex-boyfriend. 
40-year-old Torrance Reed once and for all. Ms. Marsh, you and your mom have demanded the defendant, Mr. Reed, appear in court today because you say he denies your one-year-old daughter, Tamari. Their story began when she had just turned 18, fresh out of high school, when then 33-year-old Torrance met her. In your mind, was this your boyfriend? Yes. He lived in California and she in Ohio. So they had a distant relationship, which they never work out. Just pay attention. They had slept together, so she assumed when he went back to California, it was a committed, monogamous, long-distance relationship. I never knew he was dating other women. Little did she know, he had other plans. I'm a Muslim, so I was planning on having four wives. She did. So he says he's a Muslim, you are planning on having four wives, okay? Just, just don't pay attention to that. But I want you to see, because this is paternity court now. This, the mother and the daughter, they have brought this man because he's denying the child. You see, I told you, sisters, that's what we get on you. It's easy for the men to say, that's not my thing. Okay? But listen. Find out real quick. When Torrance invited her out on a trip, she thought they'd be alone. He says, let me introduce you to my wife. Torrance. He claimed he let Danielle know he was inviting her out on the trip to meet his wife. I have never heard of a man taking a woman on vacation to meet their wife. He was my... <laughs> oh boy, you can't make this stuff up. And intended to have not one, not two, or three, but four wives. Fake Muslim. He's a wannabe Muslim. And she would potentially be one of them. I didn't know nothing about him wanting four wives. When confronted about their age difference. How old are you? I just turned 26 last And how old are you, Mr. Reed? I'm 40. He defends his actions by pointing back the finger. She's talk said he's talking about what I'm doing, but she have numerous means. After seven long... You see what he's saying? Is that this woman, she's had, she's got multiple men. But remember, they brought this man to court because he's denying the date. Okay, listen now, pay attention. Years of dating, Danielle finally understood that their relationship was doomed. He want to go travel state to state to have different babies and make and find another wife. Then he get these women involved. The courtroom was in shock as the results were revealed. You are not the father. Now, I know some of you brothers were deceived by those tears. Okay? Because the whole time she's crying, she knows for a fact that this man is not the father of this, this cute baby right here. She knows that. But notice, you see on the left, just look at her face here. Keep looking at her face. She hadn't mentioned being intimate with another man before. I don't know who the father is. Okay. You see what she's saying? <laughs> she says she knows who the father is. But she came here. To what? To make sure that this man pays for child support for a child that's not, not even him. And she knows who the father is. Now she's coming here playing the victim. Look at her face. The tears are not there. She wet the tears off. Some of you, you will fall for them tears. I don't fall for no tears. Okay? I'll let you cry and be done and then I'll get back to the what I'm supposed to say now. So you brothers, because you are judges in Islam, you better make sure that you don't fall for the tears. Because sisters will cry. To deceive you, okay? Has ten kids, so you see, you know, <laughs> oh my God, man! She, you see what she says? She says the man that slept with her, that gave her a baby. You know how many kids she he got? He got ten kids, Ooh. and she knew it. But she still brought this brother over here to pay for what? To be to pay child support. He has how many? He has ten other kids. <laughs> Are you using baby Tamari to trap Mr. Reed? He you see that thing? That's why she came to court. He just wanted this man right here to pay for the child support for a child that's not even here. Jamila. Okay, that's that's you know, that's enough to say. As a child that's coming. The reason why I'm saying this is because you see what they're saying? She's saying, no, no, it was four other times. Don't forget the point now. We're here. It was four other times when they had what? When they had sex without using a condom because they think that's protection. That's not protection. But what I want to show you, brothers, is listen, do not listen to sisters. Their sisters will lie to you. You need to understand that. You see how easy that sister was lying through her face, through her teeth? And when the paternity test came out, she said, no, no, no. Yes, I know who the father is. That's not the baby daddy. I know who the baby daddy is. He's got 10 other kids.
But a few seconds ago, she was saying, no, he, 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 he wants to marry four other, I didn't know about that, that he wants to marry four other women, and no, mm -mm, she was even crying. So this young teenager here, this teenage girl right here, she said, no, they only had four other times. She's lying. They never use a condom. Lie. They might have used it maybe the first time when they did it. But after that, listen, they use they be using without a condom. Don't let the sisters be tell you lies here. Okay? You brothers, I know you brothers, you weak brothers, you gonna fall for this stuff. Hmm. Me, I just be a tiny missing here. Okay. So you need to know how to listen to people talk. Okay. I called him and I told him that no, oh, I missed my period. So what are you thinking? Mm. Me, I think I'm pregnant. I know you're not. Mm. You see that thing? Deny. He's denying it now. You see how easy it is that sisters? Let me see the sisters' faces because I know they are mad at hell now. That's when I want to see them. I want to see the sisters' faces. Sisters, I want to see your faces now. The hell is this? Okay? Sisters, I want to see your face. I want to see how mad you are. Okay? Yes, sisters, can you see me? Yes, I can see you. Mm. Sisters, how you doing? Let me see if you can talk. The hell is this? I think it's, uh, it's can you talk, sisters? Can you talk? Uh, Sister Khusiani, I want to hear you. Okay? Class is in session, yeah. I want to see how mad or how happy you are. Good, good, good. I see the sisters laughing there. All praise to the most high. All praise. Okay, yeah, we can go back now. Okay, young sister. This is for you are you are being built up. You older sisters, you've been around the block. Mm -hmm. You're build you are being built up too. Okay. Oh please. Now let's play on. Okay. I was so shocked, like, and you didn't know what. Yeah. You see that thing? She says she was shocked. She says she is shocked that the boy said, "No, no, you're not pregnant. That can't be true." You cannot make these things up, okay? She says she's shocked. She's been having sex without a condom, as it does a protect that if you're using a condom, you're protected. But the point is, she's shocked that he's denying it. And all these teenage girls, that's that's that that's that's the mindset. They are shocked, okay? But when they were having sex, they were not shocked, they were enjoying it. <laughs> Were they shocked? No. They were not shocked. Now when the, bar, the brother is saying, mm -mm, that's not my baby. She's shocked. Okay? Because they're insane in the membrane. Because these people are not women. They're still children. So now, they are just overgrown babies. You understand? So the body is developing at a rapid rate. Now the brain cannot handle what's happening to the body and vice versa. So it's just confusion in the membrane. You understand? That's what's going on to these teenagers having sex. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know I didn't know what to do at the time. And I don't want to lie to you guys. I mean, come on, brothers and sisters. Would you really do that? Like you see, like there's no sense on how to raise children. Look at what this 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 child is doing to this child. Look at it. Mm. You didn't know what to yeah do. i didn't i didn't know what to do at the time and i don't want to uh -huh. these are the ones that end up the babies end up get, end up dying they end up choking because they didn't even know how to feed the baby how can you feed this you see this is a this is a baby you're feeding them out of the glass like this if the baby chokes yes none of them are going to have this baby babies having babies you see that to you guys my first option was abortion <laughs> mm. for the sake of my life you know like i was thinking yo my granny yo what i'm going to say to my granny if she finds out that i'm pregnant so what's gonna happen with me okay like my friends are like no show me uh, please 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 show please, please, me please don't do it don't do we, we're gonna be supportive in everything you see that thing right there 
You see the danger? Yes, they are telling you, no, don't abort the baby. Okay, fine, because that's murder. But they are saying, listen, don't worry, we're going to support you. Which means others that are not yet pregnant and they are having sex, guess what? In their mind, you're not, we, we, all of us, we are going to have children, all of us. We are all going to be pregnant. We are all going to be there for one another. Fairy tales, yeah. That's what is going on in their mind. Disney. That's what's going on in the mind of these children. Disney land. Okay? They are in Lana land. Everything you do. So what are you planning? I'm planning to raise a baby on my own. You see that thing? I'm planning to raise a baby on my own. Is that actually true? That's not true. She's not going to raise the baby. She's just a baby herself. How is she going to raise this baby? You know who's going to raise the baby? The grandmother. That's cold word to, that's cold word to me. The grandmother's going to raise the baby. I'm not going to do it. Okay? Okay, that's it on that. Um, let's jump to 9.13. Okay. Let's go back to Tato now. Okay. Nah, we'll just leave it here. Back in Rockville, Tato's friends are telling her that she's being naive when it comes to the baby daddy. He's not matured. He needs to grow up, please. So just listen to the, con the conversation. You see, these are, these are kids. They are not, these are kids. And they are talking about another kid that is uh, impregnated this other child, of which is one of their friends. They say, no, he's not grown up. Are they grown up? No. Are they mature? Hell no. But just listen to the, the, to the conversation. Talk without sense. Talk without sense. Let's get that action. Mm. Give me that in uh, Ecclesiastical chapter 27. Chapter 21, verse 18. Give me that thing. Okay. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 21, verse, verse 18. 18. Come on. As is a house that is destroyed, so is wisdom to a fool. Mm -hmm. And the knowledge of the unwise is as talk without sense. You see that thing? This is the, no the knowledge of the unwise is as talk without sense. This is talk without sense. They have no sense. They have no common sense. But they're just running their mouth. Okay? As if they know something when they don't know nothing. Okay? Watch this. Tato's father is also visiting. Now, he this is the father that was driven out by that strong-willed black woman. Okay, that loaded her husband. That Jezebel. Okay. He's hearing for the first time how his daughter has been treated by Muketi. You don't put your foot down. Yeah. That's a problem. When you say Tata there's Tata 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 mm. you, you see that thing? Where do you think these teenagers get this communication from? They get it from these singing parents that hate the men. Listen to what they are saying. The grandmothers, this is what they, they, they the grandmothers, they, 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 they advise, they give this type of demonic, abominable, hateful advice to their daughters that are married. Because the daughter, instead of dealing, sitting down with their husband to deal with the issues, guess what they do? They call the mother. They call the mother or the grandmother. The grandmother say, mm -hmm. if you are Kluneza, hey, what, what, you must come home. Oh, don't allow him to do this. Don't allow him to tell you what to do. Don't, all of that. Before you know it, she's back home. She's divorced. Okay, she's a baby mama now. You see where they get it from? Because poop, it what? It trickles from top down. So guess what? They're getting the end of the poop. This is why they are talking what they will. They are talking like this. So where do you think they get this information from? From their mothers. This is how their mothers talk. You understand? Rena is a mother. You must tell the person who's you. I mean, really, brothers and sisters, let's really just sit down and pause a second. It says, Rena, as a mother, where's the mother here? 
There's no mother here. It's just a child needing another child. There's no mother. She's not old enough to be a mother. She's a child. Okay? No, you're really the daddy. All I want to support the baby. And the thing that pisses me off is that he gives Tato false hope. That there's a relationship between them, knowing that there's none. There's no love. There's nothing there. Mm. That's the thing. Because this was never love from the get from the jump. It was it was lust at first sight. It was there's no love here. Lust. Okay, and they fulfilled the lust, this what happened. That pisses me off the most. Mutete supports supports other girls. But not you. I don't know why. I don't know. Yeah, listen. Sisters. Hmm. Could you give me the book of Ecclesiastes chapter? Um, hmm. Okay. Give me the book of Sirach 36, verse 24. Sirach 36, 24. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 36, verse 24. Mm -hmm. He that getheth a wife beginneth a possession, a help like unto himself, so, and the pillar of rest. Okay, verse 25 is what I want actually. Read verse 25. 25. Where no hedge is, there the possession is spoiled. That's what you are seeing here. Where no hedge is, the possession will be spoiled. And that's what you are looking at here. So that's why you sisters, you need to make sure you submit yourself under the leadership that the Lord has set up over you. Okay? Because if you don't have a hedge over you, guess what? You are going to be spoiled. And that's what you're looking at here. Spoiled goods. The mind is corrupt. Okay? Read that part again, verse 25. Come on. Where no hedge is, there the possession is spoiled. Mm -hmm. And he that hath no wife will wander up and down mourning. Okay, that's a different conversation to get. But the key is, where no hedge is, there the possession will be spoiled. There's no e for me. No, no, it's going to happen. That's what the Lord is teaching. Okay? It hurts, but I don't know what to do or tell him anymore. Hmm. Please, get the fifth. Get this guy where I'm up to you. We have a problem on two weeks. You see what happens when these black women drive the men out of the house, the children become spoiled because where no position is, the position is spoiled. Because she did not want to submit herself to the black to this black man right here, the father. Look what's happening to the position because the daughter is the father's position. The daughter belongs to the father. The father is the one that decides who she gets married to. The father is the one that makes the final decision. So the daughter is her father's position. Now the father is not there. The daughter, which is the father's position, now she's spoiled. Okay? Moketi arrives unexpectedly, and Tato's dad has many questions for him. That's a boy. Just look at that. That's a boy right there. Okay? This is not a man. That's a boy. Okay? Give me that in um, Sarah, 20, Sarah 23. Give me Ecclesiastes chapter 23 and verse 17. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 23, verse 17. Uh -huh. All bread is sweet to a homemonger. He will not live off till he die. You see that thing? It says all bread. All bread is sweet to a homemonger man. He's not going to stop until he drops dead. This is a homemonger. This brother is a homemonger. You heard what that, what that uh, young sister said? It says, Mukiti is able to take care of other women, but she does not take care of you. You being pregnant. Because he's a homemonger. You understand? All, he's not going to stop this homemongering behavior until the Lord kills him. He's not going to stop. You understand? Next. Uh, yeah. Believe me. 
Kutanya na yanya, maybe what? You know what, ne? Somehow, let's say, he is more righteous than I, I have to say, okay? This father right here, he is more righteous than I. For me, this is not going to happen. <laughs> he will get the beat. By the minute he walks into the house, let's say, he will be on the floor. Tell you straight. This father is more, he's more patient and more righteous than I. I wouldn't let that thing go down. You even come to my house? Are you kidding? Listen, that's that's not gonna happen. Okay. To what? So every day, to second wife, to the mother, and from day one, we were mad. Can you see? So our first door rating, maybe we, I can see we will have seats. Uh, like as I, like. At the moment, we were so shy, and then we, I'm still working on that. Um, okay, my man, 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 my the black woman now is emboldening these demonic uh, homanga men to continue this evil and do it somewhere else. This black woman is supposed to step back so this father can give this boy the beat down. Okay? But the black woman, always the culprit, she'll always find herself in the middle of man's affairs. <coughs> Stay out of man's business. You understand? <laughs> This is the mark, this one. This is the mark. Ura Akulwa ni women. Akulwa ni meaning don't fight. Listen. This is the reason why these teenagers do continue to do what they do. This is the reason why these young teenage boys, they continue to come and sleep with these young girls and impregnate them and continue on and do it somewhere else because they don't get the beat down. And the black woman is always in the middle of it. You see that? Because this woman right here, she is a foolish woman. She's not, she's a light woman. Watch this. Give me that in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1. Let me show you what type of what, what type of woman this is. She's not a wise woman. That's a foolish woman right here. Okay? Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1. Watch this. Okay, Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1. Read. Really? Every wise woman buildeth her house, mm -hmm. but the foolish plucked it down with her hands. That's what that foolish woman just did. All of that stuff because she's plucking the house down. This man wants to make sure that this and this boy understand what he's done. This woman don't want that. You understand? This woman does not want that because guess what? These mothers, what they do is they are friendly with the with the with the boyfriend because they want what? They want money. When the boyfriend sends money home, guess what? These mothers are the ones that get hold of. That's why this is being done. You understand? That's a foolish woman right there. She's plucking the house down. She's destroying that house even further. You understand? So, let me see where I want to go now. Hmm. Give me Second Timothy 3, verse 6. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 6. Watch this. I'm almost done. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 6. Second book of Timothy, chapter 3, verse 6. Mm -hmm. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, mm -hmm. led away with diverse lusts. You see that thing? It says, for of this sort are they which creep into houses. That's exactly what this boy did. He crept in and away into that house and led captive silly women laden with sin. And guess what? That's not a woman. That's a child. Okay? That's not a woman. That's a child right there. 
Let captive silly women laden with sins led away with diverse lust. Because this woman is lustful. This, this, these kids, these teenagers, they are lustful. They have got lust in their mind. So are these boys, lust in their mind. What happens when both of them are lustful? These are the things that, that these are the results of what you see here. Okay? Led away with diverse lust. Silly women, meaning stupid women, dumb women. That will lay down for a McDonald's. And this is the result of it. Okay? Watch this. Give me Isaiah 32 verse 9. The book of Isaiah chapter 32 verse 9. The book of Isaiah chapter 32 verse 9. Come on. Rise up. Ye women that are at ease, come on, hear my voice. Mm -hmm. Ye careless daughters, give ear unto my speech. You see what the Bible is rebuking the sisters now. It says, Rise up, ye women that are at ease, hear my voice, you careless daughters. Because it says the black woman is careless. You know, they are at ease, they are okay with the evils that are going down. They are okay with the teenage pregnancy. They are teaching their young daughters to have sex. They say, No, that's your body. You do whatever you want with it. That's some evil stuff. You hear it a lot here in the community. That's the talk. Okay? But the Bible says, read that again, verse 9. Isaiah chapter 32, verse 9. Ray. Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Mm -hmm. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Ray. Give ear unto my speech. He says, rise up, meaning wake up. Rise up to what? You must rise up to this Bible. Defend the gospel. He stand up for the laws of God. Rise up, ye women that are at ease. That are okay with the with the what with the whoredom that is happening with our daughters. Hear my voice, you careless daughters. Give ear unto my speech. The Lord is saying we must get on these women. We must get on them. From the youngest to the oldest, we must get on their behind. Give hold that. We coming back here. Give me Ezekiel chapter eighteen verse seventeen. Here's another one. The Most High God is saying these women are at ease and they are careless. We must get on them. Ezekiel eighteen verse seventeen. Watch this. Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 17. Mm -hmm. Likewise, thou son of man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people, mm -hmm. which prophesy out of their own heart, and prophesy thou against them. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, set your face against the daughters of thy people, against these rebellious women. He says, you must set your face against them, which prophesy out of their own heart. Meaning what? They are emotional. They speak something that is out of their own mind, not out of the word of the law. They speak how they see. No, this is how I see. I'm going to say whatever I want. That's a whorish woman right there. That's an evil woman. That's not a woman you should marry. You cannot make that woman your wife. There's no way. You understand? Because that's what God is saying. The Lord knows what he created. You understand? Read verse 17 again. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 13, verse 17. Come on. Likewise, thou son of man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people, mm -hmm. which prophesy out of their own heart and prophesy thou against them. And says, prophesy thou against them. Meaning what? We must get on the women that are what? That do not want to humble down what the Bible says. Go back to Isaiah 32. Read verse 11 now. Isaiah chapter 32 verse 11. Tremble ye women that are at ease. Mm -hmm. Be troubled ye careless ones, strip you and make you bare and get sackcloth upon your loins. Meaning what? You must have shame. That's what it's saying. Tremble ye women that are at ease. Meaning you, must, you better be afraid. Be troubled, ye careless ones. Because they are careless. That's why the Lord is commanding the sisters to rise up and defend this Bible. Because they are careless. They are simple-minded. You understand? You are building, you are building, they plant the house down. That's why you've got a lot of angry black women. They are not married. They are in long relationships, but they are not married. Why? Because even the man can tell, I cannot marry this woman right here. She's not worthy enough for me to make her to be my wife. But the man is not going to tell you. Guess what? The day when the man leaves you, guess what? Within a couple of something, that man is married. That's what happens all the time. That's why the Lord is commanding the black woman to rise up. Okay? Watch this. Give me Sirach chapter 7, verse 26. Okay. 
Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 26. Has thou a wife after thy mind? Forsake her not, mm -hmm. but give not thyself over to a light woman. You see what the, but there's the commandment, by the way. It says, has thou, has thou a wife after thy mind? Meaning what? Do you have somebody that is, that is after your mind? Meaning a woman that a woman must be after your mind. Must be after the wisdom that the Lord has bestowed away. You understand? After your mind, because your mind is after the Lord, the mind of the mind of the Lord. It says, forsake her not. He says, don't forsake a woman like that. Because she what? She's priceless. But it says, but give not thyself over to a light woman. Don't give yourself to a dumb woman. That's what the Lord is saying. That's why you have to prove the testimony. You understand? You must prove these women. Make sure that the women they stand, make sure they apply, make sure they understand what's going on in this book. Okay, watch this. Now, remember, these are teenagers that we was looking at. These are not women. These are kids. These are kids. Now, this is what happens when these teenagers, now they have to now give back. This is what happens. Watch this. Mm. I'm just going to touch on a couple of things. here. Okay, I'm not going to read the whole thing. I like this article. There was a newspaper I used to have. I don't know where I put it, but it really broke down the statistics of teenage pregnancy in South Africa. Okay. Um, let me share my screen. Okay. Okay, read that. Teen, teen pregnancy. Teen pregnancy, a rising concern. Okay. So, okay. What's going on? Okay, it's not selectable. Okay, read that. Girls between? Girls, girls between the ages of 15 and 19 years old account for 11% of births worldwide. Come on. Of this 11%, almost all the births, 95%, are in low to middle income countries, South Africa included. You see that thing? 95% of them are in low to middle income countries. Let's talk about where the Israelites are. Okay, come on. This is according to the World Health Organization's latest fact sheet on adolescent pregnancy. Mm -hmm. The WHO claims that teenage pregnancy is still a major contributor to mother and child mortality in addition to feeding ill health and poverty. You see what he's saying? It says teenage pregnancy is still a major contributor to mother and child mortality. So mortality in mothers, meaning mat uh, maternal death, and guess what? And children that die because of what? Because of the teenagers that are pregnant with them. Okay, come on. Despite ongoing awareness and deterrent attempts by government and non-governmental organizations, teen pregnancy is still a major concern. Annually, about 16 million girls between 15 and 19 years old become pregnant while about 1 million girls under the age of 15 give birth. No, that's some heavy stuff. 16 million girls between 15 and 19 years old become pregnant while about 1 million girls under 15 years old because the stats that was given it was from 10 years old and up. 10 and up. Mm -hmm. From 10 to 15, that's the one, that, that's the one million. That is, the one million is from 10 to 15. You understand? 10 years old to 15 years old. Okay, come on. A further 3 million girls undergo unsafe abortions each year, according to the fact sheet. 3 million. 3 million undergo unsafe abortions. As if there is such a thing as a safe abortion. There's no such thing. Okay? As if there's a so-called safe. There's no such thing as a safe abortion. Abortion is murder, period. Okay? 3 million undergo abortion, let's put it like that, each year, meaning every year, 3 million babies get killed. 3 million. 3 million babies get killed annually. Okay? Okay, read that. However, um, yeah, a common, started, common, a, common? A, a common misconception in South African society is that girls fall pregnant to make quick cash in the form of government child support grants. No, I, I actually, actually, however, read that however part. 
then I'm gonna make a comment. However, according to former statistician, General Pali Lee Hosa, the idea that girls get pregnant to make money is unfounded. Now, the reason why he's saying this is because, yeah, he is correct to some extent. Why? Because why do these girls uh, fall pregnant? Is because of what? Adultery. Because they're sexually active. There's no, they, 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 there's no education in the house. They're not being taught. They're not being taught. The contributor of them falling pregnant at an early age from 10 years old and up to 15 years old is because of what? There's abundance of idleness. They don't get taught God's commandments. That's why they are too idle so much so that this is the thing they do. Okay? Mm, let me see. I just want to get to the point. Okay? Read that. According to the statement? According to the statement, it is believed that 8% of pregnancies are from teenage mothers, but teenage mothers contribute 25% to the rate of maternal deaths. Now I need you to read that statement again, okay? According to the statement, it is believed that 8% of pregnancies are from teenage mothers, but teenage mothers contribute 25% to the rate of maternal deaths. So these teenage mothers, right? Teenage mothers, um, actually, you know what? Read from where? Read from this part. When people... When people who are aged 13, 14, 15 are falling pregnant, it tends to have a lot of other consequences. The lot of other consequences. Read the paragraph before it again, according to the statement. Uh, according to the statement, it is believed that 8% of pregnancies are from teenage mothers, but teenage mothers contribute 25% to the rate of maternal deaths. For that, so these teenage mothers, because when it says 13, 14, and 15, no, no, it starts from 10. And that's across all the provinces, all the nine provinces, it starts from 10 years old, okay? 25, they contribute 25% of the maternal death. What is that? Okay, let's deal with that. Mm. They contribute 25%, 25%, watch this. Now, let's read this next article. We're going to tie it all together, all right? Now, you're going to read this one. Read that, read that heading up there. Nearly half of maternal deaths in SA are teenage mothers, health MEC. So he says nearly half of maternal deaths in SA are teenage mothers. Okay, read that. KwaZulu Natal. KwaZulu Natal Health MEC, Dr. Sibongiseni Lomo, is calling for a dialogue about the dangers of unprotected sex and the high proportion of maternal deaths during teenage pregnancies. High proportions of maternal deaths during teenage pregnancy. Come on. Lomo believes the dialogue would reduce by up to half the number of mothers who die while giving birth mm -hmm. or shortly afterwards. So now it says mothers who die giving birth or shortly after giving birth, they die. These mothers, no, no, these children, because children are the ones that are giving birth, not mothers. Okay, come on. Significantly, uh -huh. teenage pregnancy accounts for about 8 to 10% of all deliveries in the country, which is about a million deliveries per year, mm. but close to 45% of maternal deaths in the country come from the small 10% of teenage mothers, because these young people generally delay coming to our clinics. So now what I want you to see here is, it says uh, eight to 10% of all deliveries in the country, which is about a million deliveries a year. So a million deliveries a year, and remember the other article says three million, okay? It says, but close to 45% of maternal deaths in the country come from small, this small 10% of teenage mothers, 45% of maternal deaths. Now, these ma maternal deaths is what? Mothers die, these, ch these children, they die during pregnancy or while they are delivering the baby or after they've delivered the baby, they die. Why? because they don't have enough blood in their body to be able to give birth. That's why during pregnancy, the baby fella needs a lot of blood. They don't have enough, their body's not developed yet to be able to handle the baby that is inside of them. 
So while they are pregnant, they die. While they're giving birth, they need a lot of blood as well, enough blood to push the baby out. They don't. They die while delivering. Or after they've given birth, they die also. You understand? Watch this. Mm. Let me see. There's another one. Yes. But clinical terms here. Yeah. Okay, read that. Definition and classification of maternal death. Read that. Definition and classification of maternal death. Mm -hmm. A maternal death is the death of a woman while pregnant or within 42 days of termination of pregnancy, irrespective of the duration and the site of the pregnancy from any cause related to or aggravated by the pregnancy or its management, but not from accidental or incidental causes. You see what he's saying? So it says the maternal death is the death of a woman while pregnant while she's pregnant or within 42 days of termination of pregnancy. Because what do they do? They have abortions, okay? But the body, the body still thinks there's a baby inside, so it's still supplying blood. That's why they lose a lot of blood and they bleed out, they die. Irrespective of the duration and the size of the pregnancy, okay? Now, but watch this. Let's see the classification of these groups, okay? Um, read that part. This includes delivery, ectopic pregnancy, miscarriage, or termination. Mm -hmm. Come on. Complications of pregnancy or childbirth can lead to death beyond the six weeks postpartum period and are classified as a late maternal death. Late maternal death, okay? Post six weeks, okay? Let's deal with the classifications now. Come on. Classifications of maternal deaths, direct obstetric deaths, Direct obstetric deaths are those resulting from obstetric complications of the pregnancy state, pregnancy, labor, and puerperium. Pu oh, uh -huh. From interventions, omissions, incorrect treatment, or from a chain of events resulting from any of the above. Okay, so now we're coming back here. Okay. You see the way we do precept upon precept? That's how you do research. Just like this. Precept upon precept. Article upon article. Okay, let's go. Um, let's read that now. Pioperium. Read that. Pioperium. Uh -huh. That part right The there. time... The time immediately after the delivery of a baby. That's what pioperium means. The time immediately after the delivery of a baby. So after the delivery of the baby, so the puperum, that's what they're talking about in the, on the types of the pregnancy of, or the maternal death, excuse me, the maternal death, okay? Let me share the screen once again. Okay, so I read the statement again. Direct of the- Direct. Death. Direct obstetric deaths. Direct obstetric deaths are those resulting from obstetric complications of the pregnancy state, pregnancy, labor, and puerperium. So now we from understand. Interventions. Now we understand what puerperium means immediately after the delivery of the baby. Come on. From interventions, omissions, incorrect treatment or from a chain of events resulting from any of the above. Because why? Because they don't know nothing about the, dealing with a baby or being pregnant for that man. Okay, come on, next one. Indirect obstetric deaths. Indirect obstetric deaths are those resulting from previous existing disease mm -hmm. or disease that developed during pregnancy. Now stop and right which there. Remember that child that was pregnant and she found out she was HIV positive? Mm -hmm. That's what that, that it falls under this category right here. Indirect obstetric death. Come on. And which was not due to direct obstetric causes, but which was aggravated by physiologic effects of pregnancy. Now that's the key right there. It says, but it was what aggravated by physiologic effects of pregnancy because their body is not developed enough to hold the baby. That's why. Okay, come on. Next one. Coincidental maternal deaths. 
deaths from unrelated causes which happen to occur in pregnancy or the puperium. Puperium meaning after, immediately after the delivery of the baby. Come on. Next one. Late maternal deaths. The death of a woman from direct or indirect obstetric causes more than 42 days, but less than one year after termination of pregnancy. After termination, meaning what? What they do is they have abortion, late uh, full-term abortion, because there's a full-term abortion in South Africa, by the way, full-term. Nine months pregnant, you say, I don't want the baby no more. Guess what? These teenagers, they bleed out, they die, okay? All of which, we, or everything that we just read, watch this. Everything we just read, right? It's in the Bible. So let's just still deal with the article. This is the next one. Okay. Read that. The truth about teen, teen pregnancy. Read that. The truth about teen pregnancy. Uh -huh. Young people, particularly young women, are often portrayed as irresponsible and, and feckless. They are reckless. That's what they meant. But yes, they are irresponsible. They are irresponsible and reckless. That's true. Because they make it seem like, no, they are not. No, they are. Come on. Getting pregnant young and having children that they can ill afford. Mm -hmm. We are frequently warned about rising rates of teen pregnancies and the effect this is having on society. The fact is that overall, the percentage of women aged 15 to 19 who have begun childbearing is unchanged since 1998. Mm. But the numbers are still high, and there is no doubt that early pregnancy can have a negative effect on a young woman's life chances. Mm, come on. To find ways to stop our children having children, we need to dig deep into the causes of teenage pregnancy. The causes of teenage pregnancy is this. Okay. Give me the book of Exodus chapter 3. Let me show you the causes of teenage pregnancy. This is the causes of it. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 14. The book of Exodus chapter 20, verse 14. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Adultery. The reason why the teenage pregnancy is because of adultery. And the reason why there's adultery in these teenagers is because there's no education at home. The parents are not doing their job to teach their children God's law. That's why. Okay? Okay, read that paragraph now. About 1 million babies were born in South Africa in 2017, a staggering 6.8% of them were delivered by young women between the ages of 10 and 17. That's it right there. You see that thing? Between the ages of 10, 10 years old and 17 years old. Go ahead. Mm. Rates of teen deliveries vary by province from 5.7% in the Western Cape to 9.5% in the Northern Cape, mm. the province with the highest rate. You see that thing? So Western Cape, Northern Cape, the provinces with the highest rate of teenage pregnancy. Come on. Stats SA's demographic and health survey found that most young women in South Africa are sexually active by the time they are 18 years and 14.8% are likely to fall pregnant by the time they are 18. That's a lie. It says by the time they are 18 years old, that's a lie. They just, you, we just go through reading that is 10, from 10. So what you mean 18 years old? No, 10. They are sexually active from 10 years old and up. Not 18 years old, the hell is this? Read that part again. Are likely, 14.8% are likely to what? 14.8% are likely to fall pregnant by the time they are 18. Mm -hmm. About 16% of women aged 15 to 19 years have begun childbearing and 12% have given birth. You see that thing? So 15, no, 10. Okay, 10 years old. Mm. Let's look at this last article right here. Then we're gonna test some script. Okay, okay, read that. Read that part, right there. He Kids between 10 and 14 made babies. You see that thing? 10 and 14 years old. Okay, let's read on now. Uh -huh. Accounting social workers' worst fears were realized when a 13-year-old girl 
she was assisting ended up pregnant. Mm -hmm. According to latest statistics from the health department in Gauteng, 351 girls between 10 and 14 years delivered babies at hospitals across the province last year. Mm -hmm. Tuane was the hardest hit with 216 babies delivered between April and November. Mm -hmm. Come on. Statistics also show that 12,866 teenagers between 15 and 19 years gave birth during the same period. Mm, that's some heavy stuff right there. Let me see, let me see. Mm. Nah, blah, 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 blah. That part uh, is not relevant. Let me see, let me see. Yes, this is the part I want to deal with, actually. Um, read from here. Read from, read from this part right here. This part. Read it. Department spokesperson Lesimang Matuka said the high rate of teenage pregnancy was a big concern. Uh -huh. This picture is alarming as a number of maternal deaths come from teenagers, as many do not come for pregnancy care early enough. They hide the pregnancy until it's too late, while others attempt backyard abortions, said Matuka. Because when it says backyard abortions, that means there's a better way to kill your baby. That's what they're saying. Okay, come on. However, Matuka could not say whether or not the rate of teenage pregnancy had increased compared to previous years. Mm -hmm. He really? said the department's three-year wellness campaign launched in November was also geared towards providing health services at schools. Really? We have school health teams that visit schools providing sexual reproductive health services and education. These include educating teenagers on avoiding early sexual encounters so that they may continue with education, Maduka said, adding that pupils were also educated on methods to prevent pregnancy and HIV if they are sexually active. So what does that mean? That means they're giving them condoms. That's what, they are, that's what that means. And that means they inject them, they inject them with what? Uh, bed control. Yeah. But today, the, our teenagers are using abortion as a form of birth control. Yeah. Not just the teenagers, the sisters too. The older sisters, they do the same thing. They use abortion as a form of, of birth control. That's what they do. You understand? Mm. Let me see. There was another of something that I actually wanted to look at. Yes. Yes, I missed that part of the article. I need to go back. Okay. Yes, this one. Um, read this one. You see, a local teacher. This is the part I wanted to read, actually. Read that part, a local teacher. A local teacher who asked to remain anonymous said parents send their children to school expecting that their teachers will give them the birds and bees talk. I'll read that part again. A local teacher hold on, hold on, asked wait, wait. him. Let me see something. Okay, let's pick it up from where you were. A local teacher, is that? A local teacher who asked to remain anonymous said parents send their children to school expecting that their teachers will give them the birds and bees talk. Because parents, some, most parents, I'm talking about the black community, now the Israelite community, they are lazy. They are lazy to sit down with their children to teach them in the house. So they send them to school expecting teachers to do their job for them. Come on. This is a common misconception among parents that it is our job to teach their children about the moral compass in terms of engaging in sexual intercourse. Mm -hmm. Education about such things must start at home. Uh -huh. We cannot build your child's character alone. This teacher, I love this teacher right here. You understand? Come on. She's correct. A solid upbringing, a solid upbringing will contribute greatly to appropriate decision-making as they grow. A solid upbringing. That's what we read in Deuteronomy chapter 6. Sirach chapter 7, verse 23. Has thou children instruct them? Okay, come on. A child who is taught right and wrong, good and bad at home, will gain from the supplementary information we provide at school. The technical aspects, if you will, 
if you do not want a pregnant child, then raise them so they know what is safe and what is not. Meaning what is right and what is wrong. You have, that, you, that's the job of a parent. That's why it says, thou shalt diligently teach them to your children when thou sittest in thine house, when thou walkest by the way, when thou risest up, and when thou liest down. You must teach your children God's law. Okay? That's it on there. All right? Now, all that we, all that we read, all that we read was based on what? Was based on the fact that um, these children are giving birth to other children, and the rate of maternal death is high. Some says 45%, you understand something? Yeah, out of the 10%, out of the, the 10%, 45% of those contribute to maternal death because these children, they die while they're giving birth. You understand? During pregnancy, while they're pregnant, during delivery, or, uh, you know, pure parent, meaning what? Immediately after. Okay, let's see if that's biblical. Give me the book of Isaiah, chapter 37, verse 3. Watch this. The book of Isaiah, chapter 37, verse 3. Mm -hmm. And they said unto him, Thus says Hezekiah, This day is a day of trouble and of rebuke and of blasphemy. For the children are come to the birth, and there is not strength to bring forth. That maternal death is that for children, for the children are come to the birth, and there is not strength to bring forth. Because these are children. They are coming to give birth, but they don't have strength because their bodies are not developed enough to give birth to a baby, let alone be pregnant. You know, let alone handle after the delivery of the baby. The baby still needs to have milk and so forth. They are even themselves, they are still they are still children. They cannot be able, their body cannot handle them. And that's what we are reading here. It's all biblical. You understand? Children are come to the birth, and there is not strength to bring forth maternal death. These children giving birth, they die because they, they, are, they don't have enough blood to be able to handle the, the, the type of ordeal the body goes through. You understand? Give me that in uh, Second Kings chapter 19, verse 3. Second Kings chapter 19, verse 3. Mm -hmm. And they said unto him, Thus says Hezekiah, this day is a day of trouble and of rebuke and blasphemy. For the children are come to the birth, and there is not strength to bring forth. So now this is a repeat. Isaiah is quoting what we are reading right now. That's what Isaiah is He's quoting. There. So what I wanted to show you, brothers and sisters, is that everything that you see in the world, you can what? You can go to the scriptures to make sense of it, of what's going on. And all of this, the cause of all of what we just read is what? Deuteronomy chapter 6. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 7. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 7. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. If you don't do this, this is what happens. These are the consequences if this does not happen to the children. If the children, are, if you don't bow down that child's neck or from, when they, from their youth, they are going to work, they're going to work stubborn, they are going to be willful, they are going to be disrespectful, they are going to be out of control. You are not going to be able to tell them nothing. And what you are seeing here, that's exactly what they do. You understand? I'm going to end the class right here. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, 
and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the honor of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the most high hand for that plan. All praise to the most high. All praise to the Lord. All praise.